Chapter 171. A thin line between Buddha and demon when Overlord entered the internal organs realm, the Buddhist monk hadn't found him a threat. However, now the Buddhist monk felt frightened and his chest tightened as the shadow of the demon lord turned back. The demon lord glanced at him in front of the Buddha statue. At that moment, the monk was too afraid to move. The demon lord's soul had returned from thousands of miles away. Overlord entered the internal organs realm in the middle of this battle. The Buddhist monk started to feel tangible panic. Overlord Black Axe, covered with demonic chi, abruptly chopped the ten feet tall golden Buddha with his palms together and a compassionate look on his face. Overlord couldn't break this golden Buddha before, despite trying all kinds of methods. Yet right now, accompanying the Black Axe's movement, demonic chi boiled instantly, like drops of water into a hot pot. A smooth incision appeared on the surface of the golden Buddha like it had been welded in. Overlord bellowed as the demonic chi soared into the air. Blue veins covered his neck and the demonic chi swirled continuously above his head. He was demonized for a moment which previously resulted in him losing a wisp of his soul to the demon lord. Now that he entered the internal organs realm, the demon lord had returned his soul. Overlord thought the world seemed to be entirely different now. He understood something. It was particularly difficult for him to reach the internal organs realm compared to other cultivators because he was missing a wisp of his soul. He had to expend more effort and more willpower because of that difference. That was why he kept failing. He had charged at the army of 50,000 soldiers alone and attempted to use that pressure to enter the internal organs realm, yet he failed. He barged through the Dragon Gate secret realm and severely injured himself on the Iron Chain Bridge, and yet still could not enter the internal organs realm. He could only suffer defeat when fighting against the ancient internal organs realm at the central palace. Overlord had never felt so useless and aggrieved in his life. Nevertheless, these experiences built a solid foundation for him even though they were not enough to grant him access to the internal organs realm. He was going to transform right at this moment. He was now the strongest candidate to ever enter the internal organs realm. He had successfully transformed. Creak, crack. A shrill sound pierced through the air. Overlord chopped the golden Buddha into halves with his axe. Inside, the Buddhist monk's face immediately changed. He slapped his palms together and began to chant Amitabha. However, the shadow of the demon lord behind Overlord glanced at him again. The tactic the Buddhist monk had been about to use became stuck like a jammed trap mechanism. The Buddhist monk's face flushed, and he looked furious. The demon lord turned back to Overlord. Fizz. Overlord eyes brightened up. He was paralyzed with fear when looking at the demon lord for the first time. It was a sense of powerlessness when faced with inexplicable fear. The demonic axe cut through the golden Buddha and loped off the Buddhist monk's neck. The enormous strength decapitated the Buddhist monk. His head flew up high and spun in the air. The Buddhist monk's body remained standing with his palms together. Overlord beheaded the golden Buddha with his axe. He landed back on the ground and let out a bellow. The wisps of demonic chi wrapped around his body. In the distance with a mangled butt, Shu Chu watched the scene and roared in excitement. Overlord. Around him, the Western Liang's armored horsemen and the Shang family's army were also exhilarated. Their invincible overlord had returned. Even though they were faced with the alliance between Gafong and the Moria Empire, so what? Western Liang would stand as long as overlord was here. Bang! With a terrifying sound, the ground exploded as if torn apart by a savage power. The blonde man from the Gafong tribe couldn't remain unfazed anymore. He held up a giant sword made of the blazing white radiance. Deep ravines appeared wherever the giant sword swung. Crushed rocks flew in all directions. Overlord turned around and roared. The shadow of the demon lord behind him disappeared. Overlord was disappointed. He would be much more powerful if the shadow of the demon lord continued to be with him. Nonetheless, Overlord wasn't too dejected. He had enough stimulation from the shadow of the demon lord previously. A simple glance from the shadow of the demon lord had been enough to paralyze the overbearing Buddhist monk. It was the deterrence brought by his power. Long ago, Overlord had kneeled before the demon lord and was demonized. Now, Overlord was able to behead the Buddhist monk with one look from the demon lord. Naturally, Overlord was astounded. I wonder which one is more powerful, the Demon Lord or Young Master Lu. After all, Young Master Lu is only human. 
The demon lord is probably the same kind of existence as the mysterious, immortal Ludao, overlord thought to himself. Either way, he didn't get to ponder for long. The blond man's fierce attack had reached him. The blond man dashed forward. The soldiers of the Moria Empire exploded as soon as he moved close to them. The light sword made of white radiance contained a frightening amount of power. Overlord raised the blood shield. The light sword suddenly swung downward. Bang! The blunt force and the destructive strength of the blow made Overlord pupils contract. It would be fine if the Buddhist monk was the only one who possessed a kind of power unknown to him, but Overlord couldn't recognize the tactics of the blonde man in front of him either. Overlord was certain that neither the Buddhist monk nor the blonde man in silver armor was from the Moria Empire or the Gafong tribe. He had never seen such moves before. How had Great Zhou with the hundred schools of philosophy defended themselves if the Moria Empire and the Gafong tribe had this kind of power behind them? Even the old overlord wouldn't have been able to withstand the attack from the Buddhist monk. These people, who on earth were they? Various thoughts spun inside overlord head. Then, he was forced backward by the impact. His two legs, wrapped in demonic chi, plowed two deep furrows through the ground. The blond man's old-fashioned silver armor, engraved with delicate patterns, emitted an eerie glow. Debris of rock flew into the air. Overlord maintained his stance. The blood shield in his hand was almost sliced in half with a long crack on it. In the distance, the blonde man was taken by surprise. No wonder the Buddhist monk why couldn't defeat this native from the Qi condensation realm despite numerous tries but also let him into the foundation building realm. It turned out, this native was indeed exceedingly strong. Blood stained the beige robe of the decapitated Buddhist monk. The color was particularly vivid in contrast to his red kasaya. The head on the ground had its eyes closed. All of a sudden, the crimson eyes on the head opened. The Buddhist monk's initially slack face turned ferocious. The head flew up and landed on the Buddhist monk's body. Yet it attached to the monk's body in the wrong direction, the bald back of his head was facing Overlord. The blond man glanced at the fierce monk and cracked a wicked smile. Hee hee, a real fight is coming. There is only a thin line between a Buddha and a demon. The Dragon Gate secret realm in the Dongyen River. Gusts of snow flurried in the air. The roiling river didn't seem to be drying out like it usually did in the winter's past. The Dragon Gate must have affected the climate of the Dongyen River somehow. Spirit Qi coming from the Dragon Gate rushed into the Dongyen River and made it warm like springtime all year round. Clam dragons dived into the water and made the river surge forward. Suddenly, two figures walked out of the Dragon Gate secret realm in the Dongyen River. LV Mudui gently tapped the bottom of his wooden cane on the ground. A young woman wearing a veil walked next to him. Dressed in light yellow clothes, she held a pippa in her arms, her slender fingers pressing on the strings. West County, LV Mudui tapped his wooden cane softly. His face was calm and emotionless. Mingyue, follow me. Yes. The young woman wearing the veil bowed slightly. The two walked out of the dragon gate of the Dongyen River. Outside the Dragon Gate. Startled, the Shang family's army guarding the gate pulled out their swords and knives immediately. LV Mudui didn't react to them and continued to tap his wooden cane. White Jade City Tianji Pavilion, Mingyue held her pippa and followed LV Mudui. The soldiers of the Shang family's army were shocked to hear LV Mudui's words. Did these two people come from White Jade City? Had they come from the other Dragon Gate secret realm? Several generals of the Shang family's army greeted LV Mudui with a hand gesture. They weren't suspicious of LV Mudui's identity anymore. Tianji Pavilion, the former Tianji school, was now under White Jade City's control. Who in the world would dare to pose as someone from White Jade City? White Jade City was the most powerful cultivation group in the world. It had subdued the hundred schools of philosophy and started a new era. The public worshipped them, feared them, and admired them. West County is in trouble. We came to help, LV Mudui said. The Shang family's army was elated by the news. A fierce battle was going on outside of the Harao Gate. Many from the Shang family's army understood the dire circumstances. The Moria Empire and Gafong had joined hands to attack at the Harao Gate. Many cities in West County would be endangered once the Harao Gate was breached. Countless people would suffer greatly. Senior, please. 
a soldier of the Shang family's army gushed in exhilaration. He instantly ordered people to prepare the carriage and take LV Mudui and Mingyue to the Harao Gate. The tents stretched across the Dongyan River. LV Mudui tapped his wooden cane and Mingyue held her pippa behind him. Suddenly, the curtain of the biggest tent in the center raised. A stunning and elegant figure appeared. Her long, black hair was loose, flowing down her back like a waterfall and her face was striking. Luo Mingsang had not gone to the Harao Gate. After all, Overlord had left in a hurry. As if she sensed something, Luo Mingsang looked across the Dongyan River. She saw LV Mudui and the young woman in a veil. LV Mudui also noticed Luo Mingsang. Seeing her familiar face, LV Mudui smiled slightly and showed his broken front teeth to her. He bowed his head to Luo Mingsang. Then he led Mingyue, who seemed to be in a daze, to the carriage that the Shang family's army prepared and galloped toward the Harao Gate. On the giant boulder next to the tent, Luo Mingsang leaned against the entrance of the tent and remained in a light trance. South County. The unbroken spell of wet weather intensified the piercing chill of winter. The raindrops falling down people's neck made them shiver with a bone-tingling sensation. Taoist Pavilion, the Tiandong Mountain, the Dragon Gate on the star-picking peak. Inside the Dragon Gate, a figure dressed in white and carrying a three-foot sword walked out slowly. The Taoist nun stood still quietly in front of the Dragon Gate with her robe flapping in the wind. She was surprised to see Jing Yu. A disciple of White Jade City, Jing Yu greeted. He looked composed when he spoke but inside, he was absolutely thrilled. How, how awesome! As the most handsome disciple of the young master, he could never diminish the imposing demeanor of White Jade City. Li Sansui, the Taoist nun, nodded slightly. She vaguely remembered Jing Yu. Besides, not many people in the world dared to call themselves disciples of White Jade City. The two went out of the Dragon Gate. Xie Yunling sat in the field on the star-picking peak. The rain had made the field particularly wet and the air above it humid. Several disciples from the Taoist pavilion sat around him and were learning something from Xie Yunling. Jing Yu carried his sword with him. He had fastened the sword on his back. Somehow, he always thought that everyone was envious of his sword. Senior Xie, old LV of the Tianji pavilion deduced that there would be a major disaster in the world. Therefore, I came to South County to help you to resist the enemy, Jing Yu said. He looked at Xie Yunling who was sitting right at the center of the star-picking peak. Xie Yunling opened his eyes and smiled. Perfect timing. The Taoist pavilion is about to head to Nanjin City to fight against the enemy. Do you want to go with us? He asked. Yes. Jing Yu nodded. Li Sansui's Taoist robes flapped in the wind. Her pretty face was solemn. She returned to the Dragon Gate. She passed the Terracotta Warriors area and walked to the Iron Chain Bridge. A familiar figure leaning against the Iron Chain Bridge. Li Sansi, she called. You should call me brother. How disrespectful. I'm still your brother even though you are now the head of the Taoist Pavilion. Li Sansi turned his head and looked at Li Sansui. His voice was tinged with irritation. Are you not going to Nanjin City? Li Sansui asked. I'm not going. With the disciple of White Jade City and the formation of His Excellency, Nanjin City will be safe. Li Sansi smiled. He turned and looked to the other side of the Iron Chain Bridge. I need to go to North County. There aren't any good cultivators in North County. Tantai Zan probably can't resist the enemy alone, Li Sansi said. The brother and the sister stood still and felt the breeze from the Dragon Gate. After a long time, Li Sansui waved her hand, turned around, and left. Li Sansi also smiled and turned around. The siblings walked away, their backs to each other. One exited the Dragon Gate while the other stepped on the Iron Chain Bridge. The central palace led to the other Dragon Gates. Li Sansi found the Iron Chain Bridge leading to Bujo Peak, he hesitated for a while. He could faintly see a young woman on the other side of the Iron Chain Bridge. She sat on the bluestone with her eyes closed, holding her legs close to her head tilted to the sunset and sunrise. He inhaled a deep breath. Li Sansi took a step forward resolutely. Nanjin City in South County. The Nanman army was bearing down on the border again. Along with the continuous battle cries, giant elephants stomped through the grass on the field. The Nanman soldiers protected figures wrapped in shabby black robes. 
These figures were like devils on the battlefield and summoned death with a wave of their hands. They stabbed the soldiers of South County and left them bleeding. The South Manor army was fighting at close quarters. Everyone was covered in blood. The attack of the Nanman army was fierce. Tang Yimo led the effort himself, like a sharp blade slashing through the Nanman army. His punches were exceptionally powerful. Any Nanman soldier who received a blow from him was either killed or maimed. Tang Yimo kept rushing forward. He was deep inside the enemy's formation from his inexorable momentum. He pressed on, headed for the figures in black robes. The figures in black robes noticed Tang Yimo approaching. Under the black robes, these people had vacant and emotionless eyes. Some brawny Nanman soldiers blocked his way from the front. These Nanman soldiers too were expressionless, like walking skeletons. They didn't understand the concept of pain. Tang Yimo crushed a person's head with his fist yet that person seemed eager to land a blow on Tang Yimo instead of escaping the pain. The figures wrapped in black robes were all chanting something with their mouths. After a long time, their wooden canes pounded on the ground. Bang! The earth under Tang Yimo's feet started to tremble and crack. Tang Yimo's eyes widened in disbelief. He could vaguely make out mysterious and eerie patterns appearing on the ground. We fell into a trap. Tang Yimo bellowed. He wanted to flee but he discovered countless spikes rising rapidly from the ground. The spikes formed a cage and sealed him inside completely. Tang Yimo's face turned ashen. It would be a devastating blow for the entire South County if he was trapped. The South Manor army started to panic at this change of events. The Nanman army shouted in jubilation when they saw that Tang Yimo, the pride of the South Manor army, was caged up. They charged headlong once more. The South Manor army was about to be defeated. Tang Yimo's eyes were tinged with blood. He kept pounding on the cage. Every punch landed on the spikes as if he intended to smash the spikes into pieces with his bare hands. However, nothing happened. The spikes were reinforced immediately by the men in black robes. He only left behind some faint fist marks. Tang Yimo was truly trapped. The South Manor army was easily subdued by the enemy. Yet at this moment, on the city wall of Nanjin, a figure in white emerged without people noticing. He exhaled a breath slowly while looking at the hellish battlefield below. He stretched out his hand and grasped the handle of the sword on his back. Jing Heaven sword, unsheathed. With the sound of metal clanking, spirit qi swirled in Jing Yu's qi core. Holding the sword high, he stepped forward and dropped in front of the city wall of Nanjin. His hand trembled. The Jing Heaven Sword started to spin and transformed into five swords in front of him. He thrust them forward abruptly, it was just like the numerous times he practiced at the Bila Lake. The sword spirit had been so powerful that it almost tore the lake apart. Now, containing the five rays of light, the sword spirit dashed forward swiftly. Chapter 172 The second meridian activates Jing Yu cared a great deal about the Jing Heaven Sword. It was a weapon the young master himself forged for him and it represented young master's expectations for him. Therefore, it symbolized his resolution not to disappoint the young master. He carried the Jing Heaven Sword with him no matter what he did, while he was eating, drinking, and even when he went to the restroom. He had practiced fervently inside the lake. Shirtless, he worked on the most basic sword movement, thrusting continuously. He wanted to cultivate his own sword spirit until one thrust could split a hundred miles of water from the lake. Of course, that would be the most ideal scenario. When he practiced in the lake at the beginning, the sword lost forward momentum within five meters because of the resistance of the water. He didn't give up. He practiced again and again. He became accustomed to the changes of the current and the sensation of the Jing Heaven sword tearing apart the flow of water. He groped after the essence of the sword from every quiver of its movement stirring the lake water around it. The sword spirit had grown in his heart. Just like the young master told him, a sword honed to perfection could split mountains, divide lakes, and cut through the sky. He had great ambitions to create a sword spirit that belonged to him only and become a prestigious swordsman. Now, under the city wall of Nanjin, wearing a white robe, Jing Yu walked in long strides through the rain. The Jing Heaven Sword transformed into five swords. They thrust forward rapidly. The invisible force of the swords cut through the misty rain like bolts of lightning from the gloomy sky. It was also as if a ray of sunlight shone through the window into a dark room and lit everything up. 
bang. The blood and flesh splattered around him. The field was filled with lamentation and howls of misery. The five swords swept across and killed all the shouting Nanman soldiers within its range. Drops of sweat dripped from Jing Yu's forehead. He grasped the spinning Jing Heaven sword. With his wrist flicking, the tip of the sword touched the ground and gorged a deep hole. Trapped by the spikes, Tang Yimo heaved a sigh of relief. People from White Jade City came to help them. With assistance from the most powerful cultivators in the world, the pressure on Tang Yimo was alleviated significantly. The Nanman soldiers became more and more peculiar. Strange new tactics followed after the spikes. He had never encountered the bizarre method of making the earth grow spikes before. Wearing a white robe, Jing Yu didn't flinch no matter what. He was no longer the coward who shrank back from danger. Now, he was determined to become a successful swordsman. An indomitable and unrivaled swordsman who could kill hundreds of thousands of soldiers alone. At the gate of Nanjin City, a Taoist robe flapped in the wind. Xie Yunling slowly walked out of the city. Taoist disciples followed him from behind. They went down the Tiandong Mountain and followed Xie Yunling. They saw the corpses and blood all over the ground. Many Taoist disciples had never witnessed this kind of carnage before. Their faces turned pale. But most of them were seething with anger. As citizens of Great Zhou, they couldn't shrink away when faced with an attack from Nanmen soldiers. Even though they didn't serve in the court, Great Zhou was still their country. Where are the disciples of the Taoist pavilion? Xie Yunling asked calmly. His voice, however, reverberated through the entire battlefield. Here, the disciples of the Taoist pavilion answered Xie Yunling. Dressed in their Taoist robes, they swallowed the bile rising in their throats because of the spilled blood and sat down cross-legged. Xie Yunling's robe flapped even though there was no wind. He sat upright on the ground. As he formed a seal with his hands, spirit Qi gushed out of his body and permeated the air as if part of the rain. In the distance, the men in black robes under the Nanman soldiers' protection finally noticed these disciples wearing Taoist robes. They raised the wooden canes in their hands and thumped the ground forcefully. Bang! An invisible wave spread on the earth, rolling and expanding. The ground seemed to become a blanket that was roughly shaken up. Bang! Bang! Spikes charged at the disciples of the Taoist pavilion like underground dragons. Form the formation, Xie Yunling said with a glance at the undulating ground. Immediately after that, he crossed his fingers and pushed out a seal. The Taoist disciples sitting all around him stood up. They stepped forward and released a wisp of spirit qi from the qi core. A brilliant white glow appeared with Xie Yunling in its center. Even the rain seemed to be frozen for a moment. They turned into ice arrows shooting from the sky and killed Nanman soldiers one by one. The blood flowed on the field in streams. The soldiers of South County were covered in blood and breathing hard. But they were not afraid anymore. Bellowing, they brandished their knives and swords and charged at the enemy with renewed energy. Their homeland was far behind them now. They would get trampled on if they flinched now. They would fight with the enemy with their flesh and bones, even at the risk of their lives. With more Nanman soldiers dead today, South County would be that much safer. The spikes rising from the earth sprang out like dragons from underground. The sharp tips jabbed at the disciples of the Taoist pavilion. Xie Yunling bore the brunt of the attack. The spikes were about to pierce through his forehead and kill him on the spot. However, the seal in Xie Yunling's hands changed again. He applied the Taoist method naturally and smoothly. A blast of wind blew through and formed a shield in front of the Taoist disciples. Bang, bang, bang. The spikes smashed against the shield and exploded. They couldn't penetrate the barrier. Xie Yunling's robe flapped furiously and the gray hair on his temples blew in the wind. He looked at the men in black robes. They had sinister tricks up their sleeves, but he had the Taoist method as well. It all depended on who was more powerful. There was a sound of light and hurried footsteps. Many figures wearing blue robes were running on top of the gate tower of Nanjin City. They made loud clanking sound while they moved. The swords came out of sword boxes like rays of silver light slashing through the night sky. The sword pavilion of Jongnan Mountain joins the battle. S hoarse roar echoed. Hua Dongliu, the sword saint, was standing on the gate tower. He carried two swords on his back, the morning chrysanthemum sword and the green peach sword. The swordsmen of the sword pavilion all started to move. 
Holding the Jing Heaven Sword aloft, Jing Yu turned with a complicated look on his face. He was gratified and cheerful even though he didn't feel a strong sense of belonging to the Sword Pavilion. Nonetheless, he was delighted at this moment. Inside the cage of spikes, Tang Yimo bellowed, his skin burning as if he was on fire. His skin was red, and his head and neck bulged with visible veins. He acted like a frantic beast. He waved his fists and kept punching the spikes. Each punch blew the spikes into pieces. He had lost count of how many punches he had thrown. His hands were bruised from all the blows. Spikes were still growing out of the ground and kept trying to kill Tang Yimo, yet they were all blasted away by him. Explode. Tang Yimo roared in anger. He slammed his body against the spikes. Dark demonic chi slowly took over his body. Tang Yimo felt restless, even though he had the help of Jing Yu in the sword pavilion. Tang Xianshang had let him take control of the matters in South County. At first, Tang Yimo only wanted to make sure his mother and sister would stay safe and have a carefree life. But now, he started to realize, he not only wanted to protect his mother and sister. That was his immediate family. Besides them, there was a bigger family in the eyes of the public, which was South County as a society. Tang Xianshang, you bastard. With bloodshot eyes, Tang Yimo cursed while fighting the spikes. The next time he let out a deep roar, his hair stood on end as if a fierce wave of energy shook off the shackles inside his body. Bang! His heart was pounding wildly and quaked the entire battlefield. The second meridian was activated. Inside the cage of spikes, Tang Yimo's shirt was torn into pieces and revealed his knotted muscles. Every vein in his body was bulging like snakes crawling over his skin. The second meridian of the eight meridians escaping demonic technique. Tang Yimo's eyes were sharp and focused. He felt like he had enough power to turn the earth upside down. Internal organs? Holding the Jing Heaven Sword, Jing Yu was taken by surprise. Xie Yunling and Hua Dongliu, the sword saint, also looked to his direction. Inside the cage of spikes, Tang Yimo's hair was blowing in the wind. He raised his hand and touched the spikes. He gripped one a little firmer. Bang! The spike blew up in his grasp. Tang Yimo's body leapt from the dust and became a blurred black shadow almost indiscernible to human eyes. So fast. Jing Yu inhaled a deep breath. The two philosophers, Xie Yunling and Hua Dongliu, the sword saint, also fixed their eyes on him. Was this, the power of the internal organs realm? The wind blew in gusts, and the sand and dust filled the air. Tang Yimo appeared next to the men in black robes. The fearless Nanmen soldiers rushed up to him. These people's movements appeared extremely slow in Tang Yimo's eyes. He crossed the distance between them in a blink of an eye and struck like a flash of black lightning. The Nanmen soldiers burst apart one by one. Tang Yimo jumped high then fell like a cannonball. Two deep footprints appeared on the ground. The men in black robes began to chant and the spikes started to grow again. However, Tang Yimo was faster than the spikes. He approached a man in black robes and smashed his elbow down on his head. The man in black robe blew up immediately, he was even more fragile than the Nanmen soldiers. All the men in black robes were killed by Tang Yimo in the twinkling of an eye. Only dead bodies were left on the ground. Blue veins were bulging from Tang Yimo's body as his blood pumped through. The tense atmosphere made people frightened of his palpitations. All the men in black robes were dead. Nevertheless, Tang Yimo didn't relax yet. On the contrary, he felt a sense of unease. He raised his head and looked through the dense woods. In the depth of the woods, a tall and brawny figure was facing away from South County. At that moment, he seemed to have sensed Tang Yimo's stare and slowly turned his head around. Bila Lake Island. The White Jade City Pavilion was still shrouded in mist. Lu Fan's white robe was flapping in the wind. He gazed at the silent, giant origin in the Bila Lake. Five types of elemental energy were flowing incessantly. Lu Fan reached out his hand and dropped wisps of spirit chi into the origin and made the elemental energy inside the origin even stronger. Still need more. Lu Fan leaned over the wheelchair and looked fixedly at the origin. He sipped some warm green plum wine. His fingers tapped on the phoenix feather arm. With sparkling eyes, he watched the battles around the world. His face remained calm. How could they achieve success without adversities? How could they mature without fierce fights? Building a world was not only about the growth of the world, 
but also the people inside that world. Going through battles and hardship was the only way to become stronger. Just like Overlord who could finally enter the internal organs realm after enormous pressure. Or Tang Yimo, who only activated the second meridian after understanding whom he had to protect. Lu Fan didn't kill all the invading wanderers immediately although he had the ability to do it. This world needed pressure to have growth. Lu Fan stopped watching the fights. He collected his consciousness and concentrated all his attention on the last part of the transformation of the Earth's origin. Once the transformation was done, it would be the time for the storm of the rejuvenation of Spirit Qi to sweep across and transfigure the world. North County, outside Tianhen Gate. Snowflakes were falling relentlessly, but the snow was stained with blood. The North County Army had launched a frenzied attack outside the gate. Wearing icy cold armor, Tantai Zong clutched the long spear and dashed into the depths of enemy troops. He kept killing the wrong people. The warm blood splattered over his face, yet he didn't mind. He wiped it away and carried on. The generals of North County were also fighting madly beside him. They had been holding the fort against the Zerong army for generations and all of them had close relatives who had been killed by the wrong people. They would not flinch and back away now. They would rather drink the Zerong people's blood at a feast. On the Tianhen Gate, Mo Beike wrapped himself in a thick down coat. Mo Ju also wore a similar crane cloak. The two watched the army fighting below with a mixture of feelings. This fight will probably kill all the cultivators raised by North County in the past three months. Is it worth it? Mo Ju asked. Mo Beike coughed slightly and smiled while watching Tantai Zan on the battlefield. It doesn't matter whether it's worth it or not. If the mayor thinks it's worth it, then it is. Actually, I'm surprised. Tantai Zan had been defeated repeatedly ever since the war started. At the Battle of Bila, the Battle of Hidden Dragon Ridge, the Battle of Capital City, he almost lost them all. But not only did this man not lose heart, but he also became even more courageous. Although he wasn't destined to have an immortal encounter, he never became dejected. At first, I only chose Tantai Zan because of the aristocratic family behind him and the fact that he controlled North County. But now, I choose him because of Tantai Zan himself, Mo Beike said slowly. The snowflakes flew in front of Mo Ju. Mo Ju laid out his hand. A snowflake fell in his palm and became a tiny piece of ice. Indeed, this man is not valiant like Overlord, crafty like Tang Xianshang, mysterious like Lu Ping'an. He is even a little, simple and ingenuous. But, he's pretty good. Mo Ju laughed. Mo Beike couldn't resist and laughed along with him. In the Zerong army, standing on his chariot, Lord of Zerong frowned while staring at Tantai Zan who was charging through his army. This man, is the mayor of North County, Tantai Zan, right? He's quite a man, Lord of Zerong exclaimed with mixed feelings. He once fought equally hard against the enemy like Tantai Zan was doing now, back in the days. He had charged from the front lines and carved a way for his men. Unfortunately, there weren't any impressive cultivators in North County of the Great Zhou Dynasty. Go. Lord of Zerong waved his hand gently. Numerous strong and merciless Zerong soldiers rode horses and galloped towards Tantai Zan at full speed. The sound of hoofbeats reverberated through the field. The horses stirred the snow on the ground into the air. The ruthless Zerong soldiers charged at him. A bizarre surge of energy burst from their bodies. Tantai Zan, in the middle of the fight, suddenly felt a chill down his spine. He saw the Zerong soldiers headed for him. The North County cultivators around Tantai Zan who held spirit Qi in their bodies rushed forward first. They fought at close quarters with the Zerong soldiers. The cultivators' weapons chopped on these Zerong soldiers' bodies to pieces, yet the soldiers didn't even utter a cry. They kept waving their weapons and killed the cultivators of North County. Tantai Zan's eyes widened. The other cultivators around him were also aghast. Leave now, Mayor. They roared once they realized the unfeeling Zerong soldiers were targeting Tantai Zan and rushed to shield Tantai Zan to provide cover for him to retreat. Tantai Zan was heartbroken to see all the dead cultivators of North County. On the Tianhen Gate, Mo Beike and Mo Ju knitted their brows in confusion. From the distance, a servant walked up to them, quickly and deferentially, and handed a letter to Mo Beike. Mo Beike opened and skimmed the letter with his eyes. A smile spread across his wrinkled face. The wind blew the snow into the air. 
Tianhen Gate opened. With the neigh of a horse, a set of silver armor gleamed in the sunshine. Leaning forward on the horse, Zhang Li held a silver spear and sprang out. In the meantime, at the Dragon Gate secret realm on Buzhou Peak, Luo Cheng wore his armor and walked out, leading by Qingyao and Ni Shuang who were carrying the baskets. Before they reached the Dragon Gate, they heard the melodic sound of a flute. Everyone was dazed. They saw a young woman sitting near the Dragon Gate, playing the flute with her eyes closed. Luo Cheng greeted the young woman while Bai Qingyao and Ni Shuang stared at her curiously. The young woman stopped playing, her long eyelashes fluttered. You have the smell of my father. Come. I will not block your way, the young woman said. Her voice was pleasant. Luo Cheng was eager to know who the father of the young woman was. They had the smell of her father on them. They had come from Bila Lake Island. Could that mean her father was? Simple and naive, Bai Qingyao and Ni Shuang didn't think too much of it. Luo Cheng, on the other hand, became more and more startled. It seemed he just discovered a big secret. Leading Ni Shuang and Bai Qingyao, Luo Cheng climbed down Buzhou Peak. Zhu Long raised her flute again. The sound of the flute sang to an empty dragon gate. Suddenly, the flute stopped. They can go through it. You, can't. Eyes closed. Zhu Long looked to the other side of the iron chain bridge. She spoke in a calm voice after a long silence. Chapter 173. How dare you enlighten a girl from White Jade City. West County. Snowflakes, along with the sand and dust, flurried through the air and made everything dreary. The vast expanse of the field was littered with the corpses of soldiers. Some belonged to soldiers from the Gafang tribe, some from the Moria Empire, and some, of course, from Western Liang. The bodies on the ground highlighted the cruelty of the war. Three figures stood in the middle of the battlefield. The Buddhist monk had turned into a demonic monk who faced the world with the back of his head forward, his neck 180 degrees in the opposite direction. A jolt of strong, devilish energy which seemed to be filled with howls of souls of the deceased, emanated from his body. The blonde man was holding a sword that still radiated light. The energy around him was coalescing as well. The strength of a peak foundation building cultivator had started to show. The blonde man had not expected the Buddhist monk to be decapitated by overlord. Nevertheless, the problem was not out of control even with this little mishap. Although the man in front of him had entered the foundation building realm from the Qi condensation realm, he was still far behind, compared to the people who were in the peak foundation building realm. The Buddhist monk, in particular, had taken off his sanctimonious facade and embraced his demonic essence which increased his fighting capacity by a great deal. The blonde man raised his chin and looked at the snowy sky. A touch of longing flashed in his eyes. He had to hold tightly to the sword to retain this sense of longing. Bang! The energy inside the blonde man's body surged as he stamped his foot. A deep hole formed on the ground below him. With every step he took, a deep hole took shape like that from an explosion, and this made him move much faster. Overlord held his black axe in one hand and the blood shield in the other. Fearless, he rushed toward the blonde man. The two collided at the center of the battlefield with the light sword clashing against the blood shield. The sword nearly slashed the blood shield open with one strike. When Overlord first entered the internal organs realm, he was only a newcomer. Facing the fierce blonde man now, he suffered one defeat after another again and again, only barely defending himself with his blood shield. In the distance, a sinister smile smeared the face of the demonic monk with his twisted neck. He put his palms together and chanted Buddhist sutras under his breath. With red kasayas wrapped around their upper bodies, old monks walked by him one by one and chanted along with him. The mournful howls of deceased souls filled the air. It lingered in each western Liang soldier's ears and undermined the morale. They began to see their comrades in front of them screaming in agony. Even the cultivators of the Shang family's army were affected in a similar way. Their faces twisted in excruciating pain. The soldiers who couldn't handle the misery killed themselves with the knives and swords in their own hands. The situation on the battlefield changed immediately. The Western Liang army was now on the brink of defeat. Overlord body was wrapped in demonic chi. He brandished his giant axe and shield as his expression turned. He was surprised the demonic monk could affect people's consciousness.
He emitted a deep roar that was meant to wake the Shang family's army up who was impacted by the demonic monk's illusions. However, it did not make much an impact. It even gave the blonde man a chance to attack him with the sword. A demon? The light sword in my hand excels at purging demons like you. The blonde man gave a wicked smile. Like a shadow, he suddenly appeared on the other side of Overlord. The air made exploding sounds as he pulled out the light sword. Overlord let go of the blood shield and waved his long axe, trying to hit the blonde man at the cost of getting injured himself. Who was the one afraid now? The blonde man squinted. He ducked backward, not wanting to get hurt. He had no intention of getting injured at the hands of a native who merely just entered the internal organs realm. He needed to save his energy to face the lord of the plane. Overlord was like a wild beast when he launched another vicious attack. Disregarding his life, he was almost an equal match for the blonde man. Even so, he was still under the influence of the demonic monk's illusions. Overlord could barely hold the fort against him for much longer. On the tower at the Tianhen Gate, LV Mudui walked slowly to the edge, accompanied by the tapping sound of his bamboo cane. He was dressed in a white robe and led the young woman who wore a veil and held her pippa. Listening to the Buddhist sutra being chanted on the battlefield, a look of concern furrowed LV Mudui's brows. He turned to the young woman wearing the veil behind him and asked, Mingyue, can you do it? Under the veil, the young woman's pretty face did not seem so sure, but she was moved by the Western Liang soldiers fighting below on the field. She nodded solemnly and replied, I will do my best. LV Mudui turned and ordered the two soldiers of the Shang family's army standing behind him, keep her safe. The two soldiers were stunned. This, but they couldn't afford to offend White Jade City, so they nodded in acceptance, thinking about LV Mudui's background. Mingyue held up her pippa behind her face veil. She leapt and sat on the gate tower. Her slender fingers caressed the pippa. All of a sudden, the soothing sound of her pippa drifted across the field. The two soldiers of the Shang family's army were amazed. Because the sense of oppression in their hearts, brought on by the chanting of the demonic monk, was alleviated. LV Mudui smiled. Holding the green bamboo cane and looking out over the vast battlefield, he couldn't help but let out a deep breath. Who said the Tianji school couldn't fight? It was only because it's not the right time to fight. I scare even myself when I become ruthless. LV Mudui didn't have the courage to jump off the high tower like Overlord did. After all, he was too old to exert himself like that. He turned and walked down the gate tower with long strides. He fondled a shiny turtle shell in his hand. There were three coins inside the shell that made melodic clanking sounds when it was shaken. Once he was outside the Tianhen gate, LV Mudui joined the fight. He calculated the Tianji with one hand and waved the bamboo cane with his other hand. The enemy soldiers were knocked aside one by one by the cane. At a steady pace, he walked across the bloody battlefield clearing the way like it was a drift of snow. He walked towards Overlord. On top of the gate tower, the young woman continued holding up her pippa. As she plucked at the strings, the beautiful sound that drifted from it reverberated like pearls cascading on a plate of jade with the power to slow down the snowstorm. The high notes wailed like pelting rain, while the low notes whispered like soft confidants. The wailing and whispering wove an intricate tapestry and echoed through the battlefield. It clashed with the demonic monk's sutra, not a direct confrontation, but an invisible battle. It was just as ruthless and critical, even though it didn't result in blood and gore. Mingyue concentrated on playing her pippa. Snowflakes landed on her long eyelashes, but she didn't even blink. Her hands plucked the strings faster and faster. The Shang family's army and the armored horsemen of Western Liang who were affected by the demonic monk's chant were all freed from the illusionary suffering. The howling souls of the deceased vanished. They turned to look at the gate tower and saw an elegant figure playing the instrument at the top of the tower. The soldiers blushed with excitement. The elegant figure was familiar to them. Besides, how could they retreat when there a beautiful woman was fighting alongside them? The song of the Pippa inspired the Shang family's army and boosted their failing morale. They fought madly with the enemy at close quarters. Their despondent mood was swept away. Overlord blocked an attack from the blonde man and took two steps back. He turned and looked at the gate tower. Ming Sang? No. Overlord frowned, then thought of something. His expression became complicated. Overlord, I'm coming to help you. In the distance, 
a white-robed LV Mudui tapped his bamboo cane on the ground littered with bodies, and walked toward Overlord in the heavy snow. The turtle shell in his hand was dimly luminous. The coins inside turned and flipped, calculating the Tianji of every passing moment. LV Mudui smiled and showed his broken front teeth. He crossed his legs and sat down. The bamboo cane continued tapping a rhythm on the ground. He looked at the blonde man. The blonde man charged at him. LV Mudui started to speak aloud the weak points in the blonde man's movements and gave instructions on how to counterattack. Overlord eyes brightened. He instantaneously began to strike back with his demonic chi and grasped every opportunity to overpower the blonde man. In the distance, the demonic monk raised the back of his head and stared at the tower of Tianhen Gate as if he had eyes growing on the bald side of his head. He looked at the young woman who was playing the pippa. To his surprise, he saw that she was able to suppress the effects of the Buddhist sutras with her pippa. With the blood-stained kasaya draped over one of his shoulders, the demonic monk stepped forward. The snow on the ground was raised in a flurry. He put his palms together and intoned another sutra loudly. Standing on the gate tower, Mingyu's face immediately turned pale. The sound of her pippa became harsh and grating. The instrument was smeared with a tinge of red. Her fingers were cut by the string. The young woman's face under the veil was adamant. She kept playing the pippa with her bloody fingers. The melodic music once again resounded across the battlefield and triumphed over the Buddhist sutra. LV Mudui's expression changed a bit. He calculated even faster. Overlord also realized that he couldn't drag out the fight any longer. The battle had to finish soon. However, the blonde man seemed quite relaxed. He waved his sword in an offhand manner. He recognized that LV Mudui was an unusual man who was able to calculate his next move and point out his weaknesses. Are you from the Tianji Pavilion of White Jade City? Under the control of the Lord of the Plain? The blonde man squinted. LV Mudui continued to read aloud the enemy's openings to Overlord. It doesn't matter even if you can predict my next move. You can't kill me. The blonde man chuckled. He swung the light sword and promptly shattered the ground in front of him. The mud, soaked with blood, flew into the air with snow. Overlord Axe swept across and dashed against the light sword. The shockwave spread around. The blonde man's eyes focused. He cracked an evil smile. Two deep craters appeared under his feet. He seized the chance to close in on Overlord and slash the blood shield with his light sword at full speed. The blood shield exploded into two halves upon impact. You are a dead man walking. The blonde man curled up his lips. Overlord gasped for breath. Oh, is that right? Sitting on the ground in the distance, LV Mudui also smiled with his broken front teeth shown. Luki, kill. His voice echoed. An astonishing amount of murderous energy surged into the air. The sky became hazy from the snowstorm. A corpse far away suddenly stood up. A ray of silver light flashed. With a clanking sound, the silver light spun rapidly like a windmill. Overlord Bloodshield had split into halves, so he resisted the light sword attack with his body and gripped the sword tightly with his hand. The blonde man's pupils contracted. With spirit chi bursting from it, the corpse jumped up from the ground and pressed its knees into the blonde man's back. The spinning silver light dimmed and became a giant pair of scissors. The dead body grasped the silver scissors, and stabbed them downwards emotionlessly. Fizz. Blood sprayed. The corpse, whose knees were still pressing on the blonde man's back, raised its head and stared at Overlord with a stony face. Helping you, doesn't mean I have given up on killing you. Sooner or later, I will have your head said Mo Luki, the number two, no, number one assassin in the world. On the other side, the demonic monk walked forward step by step. His bloody kasaya flapped in the storm. He walked faster and faster. Striding across the battlefield, he came to the sturdy tower of Tianhen Gate. He leaned back as far as he could without breaking his back. Then he sprinted up the wall of the tower of almost ten meters. Mingyue was concentrating all her attention on playing the pippa and didn't notice it at all. With all of her ten fingers bleeding, the strings reeked of blood. Nevertheless, she was still absorbed in playing her pippa. All of a sudden, Mingyu's heart dropped. Another string broke. A bloody wheel appeared on the back of her hand as the string bounced and cut her. The two cultivators from the Shang family's army who were protecting her bellowed in anger. They pulled the long knives stuck in their belts. Because, 
Not sure when, within the crenel of the wall, a bald back of a head popped up in front of Mingyue. His bones gave out a creaking sound. As the head turned slowly, the bloody, ferocious face of the demonic monk came into view. With a cold smile, he stared at Mingyue. The Buddha says your depraved song disrupts people's minds. You need to be enlightened, the demonic monk said slowly. But just as he finished talking, a white figure darted towards him like a bolt of silk. One leap later, a foot slammed hard onto the demonic monk's face that appeared through the crenel of the wall. It was a solid kick. The tremendous force hurled the demonic monk down the wall like a cannonball. The monk fell to the ground into the pile of dead bodies and snow. Enlighten. Who do you think you are? How dare you enlighten a girl of White Jade City? A calm voice reverberated around the gate tower. Mingyue raised her head and looked at the white figure nearby who was still holding a kicking pose. The figure had a stubbly beard and had a butcher's knife stuck in his belt. Uncle, Uncle Ni? Mingyue was stunned. Ni Chongqing nodded slightly. He abruptly pulled out the butcher's knife. Spirit Qi condensed around it. A large shadow was projected by the butcher's knife. Royal knife. Old Ni said. The shadow of the knife immediately released a terrifying force that had reached its finest form in the internal organs realm. It blasted toward the demonic monk laying on the ground below. Bila Lake Island. Ning Zhao raised her head and gazed at the sky. Snowflakes drifted through the air. It starts to snow, Ning Zhao said. Nearby, Ni Yu nodded. She took out a sugar-coated elixir from her pocket and put it in her mouth. I wonder when the young master will come out of his retreat, Ni Yu muttered. Sister Ning. Do you think the young master is hungry since he has been in seclusion for three months? How can people survive without eating? Ni Yu put another elixir in her mouth after she spoke. Young master's capabilities are beyond our imagination. If he can do this in one shot, maybe he can also survive without eating, Ning Zhao said. But that's no fun. I don't think the young master is someone who doesn't need to eat. He is an epicure deep down. Didn't you see how much he likes drinking green plum wine and eating laba porridge? Young master enjoys eating a lot, Ni Yu said, clicking her tongue disapprovingly. Ni Yu glanced at Ni Yu and her even chubbier cheeks. This girl, she had become bloated during the three months the young master was in seclusion. Young master is right upstairs. You should watch your tongue, Ning Zhao said. Ni Yu took out another sugar-coated elixir and handed it to Ning Zhao. She wanted Ning Zhao to taste it as well. Ni Yu pursed her lips, smiling. Young master is still in seclusion. He can't hear me, she laughed. Ning Zhao didn't take the elixir. Holding the cicada wing sword in one hand and gazing at the snowy sky, she exhaled a breath. Suddenly, her body stiffened. She heard the squeaky sound of snow crunching from behind the pavilion. A figure sitting upright in a wheelchair slowly came into sight from the pavilion and appeared behind Ni Yu who was sitting on the stone stairs. Who can't hear what? Ni Yu raised her head and leaned backward. Gazing at the world upside down, she saw a familiar face in the wheelchair. Her jaw dropped open and her chubby cheeks twitched. The sugar-coated elixir in her hand dropped to the floor. Chapter 174 a baby chick fell from the sky the silence that ensued was frightening. Bending her neck a little, Ni Yu could clearly see the figure behind her. The expression on her face froze and her cheeks were suddenly stiff and numb. She didn't even feel remorseful that the sugar-coated elixir had fallen on the snow. Of course, it was also because she believed in the five-second rule that the elixir would still be edible if she picked it up right away. Young, young master. Ni Yu spluttered. Sitting in the wheelchair. Lu Fan stared at Ni Yu expressionlessly. He didn't scold Ni Yu though. Lu Fan had an extremely mild temper after all. He simply raised his eyes slightly and waved his hand. A pebble from the lakeside flew to him and floated in the air. Lu Fan lifted his finger and gently wrote on the pebble. Dust from the stone blew away in the wind. Then, Lu Fan gestured with his hand, causing the pebble to fall on the ground, crushing the elixir. I have been in seclusion for three months, so maybe that's why you think you can slack off. The refining manual of the body tempering elixir is documented on this pebble. Take a look. I want to see the finished product in three days, Lu Fan spoke in a soft voice, leaning forward in his wheelchair. Ni Yu didn't know what to do with her hands. She looked at the crushed elixir, heart aching at the loss of the treat. 
Was the young master a monster? Why couldn't he let an innocent elixir go? Hands shaking, she picked up the pebble on the ground and read the elixir recipe carved on the pebble in tiny font. No one else but the young master would carve an elixir recipe casually on a pebble. Ni Yu pursed her lips. Did she dare to refuse the young master? Young master, is your seclusion over? Ning Zhao asked, looking at Lu Fan with her bright eyes. She combed her fingers through her hair. Lu Fan nodded. Young master, she said, Jing Yu and the others have left the island to fight against enemies in each county. Ning Zhao continued, the world is facing a huge crisis. I know. Lu Fan remained calm and composed, unsurprised by the news. Ning Zhao was puzzled for a moment, then she realized that the young master probably already knew about it. Even though the young master rarely left the island, he was somehow aware of everything happening in the world when he sat in the pavilion alone. Snow drizzled from the sky. White snowflakes fell into their hair. Naturally, the snow couldn't touch Lu Fan. An invisible energy current flowed around his body and dispelled the snow. Lu Fan rested his chin on one hand, a white coat draped over his shoulders. Then, automatically, the Thousand Blades chair wheeled itself down the White Jade City Pavilion and moved toward Bila Lake. Ni Yu held the pebble in her hands and Ning Zhao looked after the young master in confusion. In the distance, Yi Yu also opened her eyes from cultivating and rushed to them. Inside the lake, the small responsive dragon leapt out through the ice as if it sensed Lu Fan's presence. Lu Fan petted it briefly and it disappeared into the lake. The Thousand Blades chair moved slowly past the lakeside and floated above the lake like a lonely canoe. Its movement wrinkled the mirror surface of the lake. Lu Fan reached the center of the lake and slowly raised his hand. The lake split into halves suddenly and opened up. Ni Yu and the rest were dumbstruck by this scene. A giant golden ball rose from the bottom of the lake. Five different colors floated inside the golden ball. The ball emitted energy of a tremendous momentum that frightened Ning Zhao and the other people on the island. Even Ning Zhao, who had reached the internal organs realm, didn't dare to stare directly at the golden ball. What, what is that? Ning Zhao was intimidated. Gripping the pebble, Ni Yu gulped. Could it be, a large fried dough the young master made? Ning Zhao didn't know how to respond. Above Bila Lake, Lu Fan's hair was blowing in the wind. He looked at the floating plane's origin which had the similar dimensions of a pan, then reached out his hand and put his palm on top. Buzz. A peculiar kind of wave started to surge. The clouds above White Jade City broke up and swirled into an upside-down funnel. A strange transformation began to take place, South County. It was raining outside of Nanjin City. The pungent smell of blood permeated the air. The situation on the battlefield was now under control. Jing Yu wielded the Jing Heaven Sword among the Nanmen army. His white robe was still spotless somehow. The force of the sword affected hundreds of meters with one strike. Many Nanmen soldiers were severely injured. Jing Yu felt that even his sword spirit was well refined for this kind of attack. In the distance, Hua Dongliu, the sword saint, was amazed by Jing Yu's technique. The essence of the sword cultivation born out of flashy and complicate movements had returned to its original purity and simplicity. It was very difficult to master simple techniques like thrusting or sweeping. He hadn't expected Jing Yu to be able to understand that. Hua Dongliu easily saw through what Jing Yu was after. Jing Yu wanted to refine his sword spirit, just like Hua Dongliu's east flowing sword spirit, which had crushing power, mighty and irresistible as a rushing river. Hua Dongliu had spent 30 years developing that east flowing sword spirit. Hua Dongliu flew down from the wall of the gate tower. He pulled and brandished the morning chrysanthemum sword. Countless shadows of the sword fused and struck with great strength and energy. Hua Dongliu landed next to Jing Yu. You need to maintain a steady stream of qi in your heart to comprehend the sword spirit. You have to understand what you want from the bottom of your heart, what your sword wants, Hua Dongliu explained. He spoke with a smile, looking at Jing Yu, the sword has its own spirit. If you understand that, you will be able to develop a sword spirit without too much trouble. The times are different now. Spirit qi gives the sword a breath of life, so it's become easier to develop the sword spirit. You just have to put your heart into it. Holding the Jing Heaven Sword aloft, Jing Yu nodded. He closed his eyes and tried to feel the spirit qi surging in his qi core. Hua Dongliu didn't say anymore. 
he charged at the enemy with his sword. They might have been commoners living in the Greenwood, nevertheless, the world was not simply full of the government and the officials. The populace was an important component of society. How could they sit by idly and cower under the enemy's attack? The effectiveness of combat started to improve with the support of different groups in South County. The Nanmen soldiers began to retreat frantically. Tang Yimo had been fighting in a frenzied manner ever since he activated the Second Meridian. He had killed most of the bizarre shamans in black robes. Inside the woods, a deafening sound shook the ground. A tall and brawny figure appeared from its dark depths. The sod underneath his feet nudged him forward helplessly. Tang Yimo's body stiffened, he sensed a great deal of pressure as this man emerged. A cultivator from White Jade City. Wrapped in a black robe, the man was strong and muscular, yet moved with a soft and elegant manner. He glanced at Jing Yu in the distance, then fixed his eyes on Tang Yimo. You're cultivating a demonic technique. It's a sin to sink into demonic cultivation. The man in black robe crossed his fingers in front of his chest like a noble gentleman. His demeanor seemed incongruous with his stature. Tang Yimo didn't waste time talking to him. His entire body was feverish, covered in bulging blue veins. He lunged forward like a raging demon. The ground under his feet dented and cracked. This muscular man must be the chief culprit who directed the Nanman army and began this war. The Nanman army would retreat as long as he killed this general. How grumpy. The mud and soil under the man's feet somehow shifted him out of reach. Surprisingly, Tang Yimo couldn't keep up. It didn't feel right. I'm at the peak foundation building realm, the man said, contemptuously. Judging by your cultivation method, even though you have a similar combat capability with those in the foundation building realm, you still rely mostly on physical strength. You need to know that technique is where the real power lies. As strong as your body is, what good can it be if you can't even come near me? Anger raging with his eyes, Tang Yimo picked up speed. His skin began to bleed because he had activated the second meridian without much thought and his body hadn't adapted to the power raging underneath his skin. The muscular man chuckled. He raised his hand and waved. Bang! A giant stone pillar burst out of the ground abruptly. Tang Yimo punched the pillar and blasted it to pieces. With help from the moving ground, the muscular man slid far away and continued smiling elegantly. He continued to wave and twist his fingers while chanting something with his mouth. Spikes came out from the ground. This bizarre technique sent cold shivers down the spines of those who saw. Of course, Tang Yimo was not afraid. He exerted all of his strength and shattered the spikes. You have a strong body. Unfortunately, there is always a limit to physical strength. The muscular man smiled gracefully. He raised his hands, palms facing each other. Then he clapped his hands together. The broken stones from the ground suddenly flew up into the air. Everything went black in front of Tang Yimo's eyes. Two hemisphere-shaped piles of dirt shot up and encased Tang Yimo. They morphed into a sphere and fell to the ground quietly. Stone dust skittered off the surface of the ball. The muscular man smiled faintly. He raised his head and looked at the wall of Nanjin City. The Lord of the Plain. He crossed his fingers in front of his chest once more. Even though he was only a drifter, he still wanted to maintain elegance. Shamans in black robes appeared behind him again. Staring ahead vacantly, they had soulless expressions on their faces. They were puppets who only moved with knowledge of their techniques. Everyone was stunned to see Tang Yimo cocooned inside a dirt sphere. Suddenly, Jing Yu opened his eyes. An invisible wave of energy was surging around his body. After a bit of practice, Jing Yu finally understood the true meaning of the sword spirit after that lecture from Hua Dongliu. My sword spirit is to press forward with an indomitable will, Jing Yu muttered. He griped the Jing Heaven sword hard in his hand. It reminded him of the time when he was practicing in Bila Lake, the sense of accomplishment when he saw the water was split by his thrust. Again, and again, the distance his sword could reach became longer and longer. Buzz. Jing Yu opened his eyes. He felt as if his entire body was replaced by an invisible blade. The sword spirit. Gripping the sword tight, Jing Yu lunged forward and thrust. A simple and unadorned move, he jabbed at the muscular man. The ground cracked beneath the force of the sword. An invisible bolt of energy spurted out 500 meters. The moving ground under the muscular man's feet stopped. 
The man raised his hand and waved gently. Dozens of stone planks rose from the ground under the attack from Jing Yu's sword spirit. Bang! The stone planks were pierced through by the force of the sword. One by one, the stone planks cracked, unable to withstand the impact at all. The sword penetrated 52 stone planks like darts through paper. By the time it passed through the last stone plank, the force was so weak that it was barely detectable. It was almost like a breeze blowing against the muscular man. It simply cut a strand of his hair. Swordsman. The muscular man squinted. The natives of this world were quite something. The young man who had the physical strength of the internal organs realm and this swordsman who pierced 52 stone planks with one thrust, they both had extraordinary talents. They were remarkable. Jing Yu frowned when his first strike failed. Holding the Jing Heaven Sword aloft once more, he took out a folded handkerchief from his pocket, opened it carefully, then picked up a gathering qi elixir and put it in his mouth. The spirit qi flowed through his body again, he raised the sword. He didn't succeed with one strike, so he would try a few more. The muscular man waved his hand. The shamans behind him stepped forward and started to encant. Whistling. Spikes shot toward Jing Yu one by one as they chanted. The disciples of the Taoist pavilion led by Xie Yunling also roared and stepped forward into formation again. A giant, round formation made by spirit Qi floated in front of him and blocked the spikes. On the city wall of Nanjin, a figure wearing a blue robe slowly came into view. Sima Qingshan was tired. He had remained in the Dragon Gate for three months to improve his strength. He wanted to be able to kill the enemy with ease, like Ni Chongqing. Gripping the brush in his hand, he stared at the gory battlefield outside of Nanjin City. He raised his head and relished the cold rain dripping onto his face. Sima Qingshan retrieved and unfurled the unused paper he carried on his back. He flung the brush into the air and used the rain as ink. Spirit Qi gushed from his Qi core. He painted with the rain. Under the city wall of Nanjin, the muscular man's view suddenly changed. The bloody field covered with corpses vanished. Instead, he could only see a misty, rainy sky. He seemed to be floating above a lake while the rain wrinkled the surface of the lake. He looked around frantically only to discover the exact same scene in the same color palette in all directions. Like he was trapped in a limitless cage. On top of the gate tower of Nanjin City, Sima Qingshan's face cracked a bright smile even though his face was white as a sheet. The penurious painter drew a painting with the rain and encaged the muscular man. North County. The battlefield was a tragic sight because North County didn't have powerful cultivators like Ni Chongqing. It had been an especially fierce and arduous fight. Zhang Li led the army and had gained the upper hand. The North County armored horsemen clashed with the Zerong soldiers like ice and snow melting together. Lord of Zerong watched Zhang Li in his silver armor. This is indeed an interesting world with plenty of gifted people, what a shame, the Lord of Zerong exclaimed. He thought he should give these talents their well-deserved respect. He climbed down from his chariot and walked briskly toward Zhang Li like a swift shadow. A sense of danger made Zhang Li's blood run cold and his flesh creep. Like the shadow of death had enveloped him in an instant. Zhang Li pulled out his short sword instinctively and held it defensively in front of his chest. The black shadow somehow stepped on the head of Zhang Li's horse, he pointed at Zhang Li with one finger. Zhang Li defended himself with the short sword, a cracking sound. The short sword shattered. Zhang Li was thrown off the horse by a strong force. Blood spewed from his mouth. Two cultivators from North County rushed to block the attack. Kai Lian sprang toward them frantically. Lord of Zerong simply waved his hand. Bang! With frightening force, he tossed Kai Lian and other people away. Lord of Zerong walked up to Zhang Li with deliberate steps. You're talented. Tell me your name so I may remember you, the Lord of Zerong said. You're not the Lord of Zerong, Zhang Li said in a soft voice, blood streaming down from the corner of his mouth as he examined the man in front of him. What I did was sinful. The Lord of Zerong spoke hesitantly. I couldn't face all of you. That's why I will use another man's face. It's the only way I can feel less guilty. Humph. What hypocrisy, Zhang Li sneered. You don't deserve to hear my name if you don't dare to show your face, Zhang Li said. The compassion on the Lord of Zerong's face vanished. He stared at Zhang Li expressionlessly and lifted a finger. 
he reached out to poke the center of Zhang Li's forehead between his eyebrows. Kai Lian dashed toward them, yelling hysterically from afar. Everything seemed to have lost its color and sound vanished from Zhang Li's ears. All of a sudden, a yellow baby chick flew in an arc across the sky, innocent and confused. It fell into Zhang Li's arms, bouncing a little from the force of its flight. Lord of Zerong had been interrupted by a baby chick, he was dazed for a moment. Eh? What was the meaning of this? Chapter 175 Break the Barrier of the World The Lord of Zerong was not the only one who was astounded. Even Zhang Li had no idea what was happening. A ball of yellow fell from the sky. He looked closely at the thing when it landed and realized it was a baby chick. Where did this baby chick come from? Lord of Zerong frowned slightly and stared at the baby chick in Zhang Li's arms. This couldn't possibly be an ordinary baby chick. Somehow, Lord of Zerong sensed from this baby chick a form of energy that was no less powerful than the level of peak qi condensation. A chicken at peak qi condensation? What kind of spiritual beast? Lord of Zerong narrowed his eyes pensively. Then, a sparkle twinkled in his eyes. A spiritual beast was full of juice eating it would boost his strength. Zhang Li grasped the baby chick as he came to a realization. Wasn't this the baby chick Bai Qingniao was raising? How did it get here? Did this mean that Bai Qingniao was also here? Zhang Li's heart sunk. He was nervous and alarmed at the thought. He had explicitly told Bai Qingniao to stay on Bila Lake Island, the safest place in the world. Why had she come to the North County battlefield? Right now, on the Tower of Tianhen Gate, Gasping for breath, Bai Qingyao showed up with Ni Shuang beside her, carrying a basket. Luo Cheng's eyes blazed with anger, his hand briefly touching the knife girded at his waist. Looking at the dead bodies lying under Tianhen Gate, Luo Cheng could see the cruelty of a border clash for the first time. A civil war in Great Zhou might get intense, yet they rarely fought to the bitter end. The losers would simply flee and come back when they were ready again. It was nothing like a border fight, they couldn't retreat at all. Bai Qingyao's eyes flashed with rage. She had seen her uncle Zhang being thrown off a horse and vomiting blood. He had been an invincible hero in her heart, yet here he was suffering such humiliation. How could she swallow this insult? No one could bully her uncle Zhang. Lil Phoenix won. Fight for me. Bai Qingyao screamed with fury from the Tianhen Gate. The Nine Phoenix transformation in her head started to activate as her voice faded off. A burst of spirit chi was pulled from the chi core in her body. The wisps of spirit chi that left her chi core shot into the baby chick in Zhang Li's arms like flashes of fire. The Lil Phoenix One's eyes brightened up like fireworks burning in the night sky. Its body grew dramatically in just a short time. A red radiance blazed on the field. Even the snow falling from the sky evaporated into hot steam. A resonant chirp resounded on the battlefield. In one second, the baby chick had transfigured into a fire phoenix. Like the scorching sun, it emitted sweltering heat and energy as it spread its wings. The Lord of Zerong's brows were knitted tightly. He raised his hand and put up an invisible shield that protected him from the flames of the fire phoenix. Bai Qingyao clenched her teeth on the Tianhen gate. Fire from the phoenix reflected in her eyes. She had been simple and naive. Zhang Li was the one who always kept her safe from harm. Now, she was no longer a defenseless little girl. She had enough strength to protect Zhang Li too. He used to take care of her. Now, she was going to watch over him as well. Ni Shuang. Let's go. Bai Qingyao shouted. Ni Shuang was already rolling up his sleeves, readying himself for action. Good. His young and tender face was filled with excitement. The brutality and violence of the battlefield made him tremble. But it was not because of fear, it was exhilaration. He had faced death and despair that stormy night in Bila City. Luo Cheng pulled out a knife from his belt and followed Ni Shuang and Bai Qingyao. They climbed down Tianhen Gate. Luo Cheng was eager to kill enemies with his own hands. However, Lu Chongkong had ordered him to protect Bai Qingyao and Ni Shuang. That was why he had stayed away from the battle. He had to protect the two of them. Bai Qingyao took out another two curious baby chicks from the basket. In the distance, Zhang Li was pulled out of the field by Kai Lian. He was a little stupefied. The battle scene before his eyes overstimulated him and made him feel overwhelmed and bewildered. 
a giant, burning chicken was fighting fiercely against the Lord of Zerong. Terrifying flames raised a cloud of dust and melted the snow. Was this really Bai Qingniao's baby chick? How could it be, so powerful? Zhang Li gasped in shock. Kai Lian was still engulfed with a feeling of panic. Thank goodness Qingniao got here in time. Otherwise, Zhang Li's fate would have been sealed. The Lord of Zerong was very powerful. Leading Zhang Li, she ran in the direction of Bai Qingniao. Zhang Li was severely injured. The single prod from the Lord of Zerong had damaged the meridians in Zhang Li's body. He couldn't fight anymore. The Zerong soldiers chased Kai Lian and Zhang Li madly, trying to kill them. In the distance, blood dripped down in streams from Tantaizan's armor. Even his knife blade had become bent. He retreated to Tianhan Gate under the cover of several cultivators from North County. They were shocked by the brutality of the Lord of Zerong's power. The cultivators from North County had tried their best to resist the soulless Zerong soldiers. Tantai Zan envied the way the cultivators fought the Zerong soldiers. Cursing and shouting encouragement, he was itching to join them with his bent knife. These were all the soldiers that he trained in the Dragon Gate for three months. They were his companions who shared a real sense of camaraderie with him. Tantai Zan wanted to continue fighting, but he was pulled away by several cultivators. F asterisk CK these sons of B asterisk TCHES, Tantai Zan roared. I swear I will stamp out Zerong in my lifetime. Bai Qingyao and Ni Shuang rushed forward. Luo Cheng pulled his knife and released the power from the dragon's blood elixir. Emitting a red radiance, the knife cut a Zerong soldier into half. Half squatting, Ni Shuang bellowed and threw a punch. The spirit qi in his qi core was roiling and surging with great power and momentum. He knocked a Zerong soldier dozens of meters away. Holding one baby chick in each hand, Bai Qingyao flushed while looking at Zhang Li who was still dazed after being pulled back by Kai Lian. Lil Phoenix 2, Lil Phoenix 3, kill them all, Bai Qingyao shouted. She took out the gathering qi elixir that Ni Yu gave her. Ni Yu and Bai Qingyao were close friends. Ni Yu had specially prepared a bag of gathering qi elixir for her to protect herself. After taking an elixir, the spirit qi in her qi core was replenished. The two baby chicks she tossed into the air spread their wings. Two flashes of red light shot into the Zerong army and went on a rampage. They united with Lil Phoenix 1 to attack the Lord of Zerong. Three phoenixes fought together, it was a soul-stirring scene. At least, it made Mo Beike and Mo Ju on the Tianhan Gate at a loss for words. The cultivators of White Jade City, Mo Beike exhaled a deep breath. The more he knew about White Jade City, the more powerless he felt. There were reasons why White Jade City could override the hundred schools of philosophy and inaugurate a new era. Even the chickens of White Jade City were so powerful. Do you command beasts? Like a shadow, Lord of Zerong dodged the attack from the three phoenixes. Unfortunately, these spiritual beasts are too weak. Lord of Zerong would be in trouble if they were spiritual beasts from the foundation building realm. However, he was not afraid of them at all. They were only in the Qi condensation realm. Carrying the bamboo basket, Bai Qingyao's hair blew in the wind. Zhang Li was dumbstruck. The poultry woman he had known in the past somehow became so powerful without him knowing. The clouds thickened. The temperature dropped as fluffy snow drifted down from the sky. Snow blanketed the entire capital city. Kong Nanfei walked out of Zijin Palace. He felt a little cold. Even the Sherpa-lined Confucius robe couldn't keep him warm. He stood on the staircase of the galley in the imperial city, staring at the heavy snow, and slowly breathed out a puff of warm vapor. Yu Wen Shu's response disappointed him. He began to question if Master's insistence had been accurate, to begin with. Stamping through the thick snow, he watched snowflakes falling down on his body. Kong Nanfei walked out of the imperial city by his lonesome self. Officials walking along the main road after the morning meeting stayed away from Kong Nanfei like the plague. After all, Kong Nanfei and Yu Wenshu had had an argument during the morning meeting. All the officials wanted to avoid being suspected of colluding with Kong Nanfei. Even though Kong Nanfei had been the disciple of Kong Shu, the imperial advisor, Kong Shu's prestige was diminished ever since he retired. The entire capital city was now under Yuan Shu's control and he planted the Black Dragon Guard all over the city. 
Yu Wenshu had been pulling his horns in a little bit when Zhang Li was still in the capital city. But now, the capital city became gloomier with each passing day. The officials and ministers didn't dare to speak out or ask questions. Additionally, the imperial city had been recruiting young eunuchs in the past three months. Rumor had it that the little emperor was cultivating with human lives. It made the public even more afraid of speaking out. Kong Nanfei returned to the book pavilion and untied his coat. He shook off the snow off his coat and stepped inside. The book pavilion was much warmer. He could hear the sound of hot tea boiling. Mo Tianyu sat in front of the door and drank wine from a gourd. His head was buried in the hexagram in his hands and a look of concern furrowed his brow. Hearing Kong Nanfei's return, he raised his head and nodded. Kong Nanfei glanced at Mo Tianyu who continued calculating the hexagram and walked to the second floor of the pavilion. Creak, crack, the sound of the rocking chair echoed in the pavilion. Master sat in front of the window covered by a thick blanket. He knitted his brows, deep in thought, while looking at the plantain trees bent in the heavy snow outside the window. Some letters about the five barbarians were scattered around him. Master, Kong Nanfei greeted. He found a poof, sat down with his legs crossing, and added a piece of wood to the burning fireplace. He told Master what happened during the morning meeting that day. Finally, Master's expression changed. His Majesty really said that? Kong Shu asked. Kong Nanfei exhaled a sigh and shook his head in frustration. Was His Majesty's decree sent to North County? Kong Nanfei stood up and walked to the window. He looked at the snow outside, then lowered his chin, said, it was sent to North County at full speed. Kong Shu replied, His Majesty wants to use the five barbarians to weaken the influence of the three counties. His Majesty is too young. If the late emperor were still here, he would have definitely sent out all troops to quell the five barbarians as soon as they attacked Great Zhou. A civil war is one thing, but he should never become indulgent toward a foreign enemy. His Majesty grew up in the Imperial City and had faced a dark age with various groups trying to undermine the dynasty ever since he succeeded the throne, he was very eager to restore the glory of Great Zhou. Therefore, he thinks the attack of the five barbarians is his chance to do so. But, a foreign enemy cannot be underestimated. Master shook his head and sighed softly. He grasped a letter from Dongyang County in his hand. He put down the letter and stared at the plantains again. His body shrank into the rocking chair. Kong Nanfei turned and pulled the blanket further up his lap. Then he turned and left the pavilion. He passed Mo Tianyu who was still sitting in front of the door. You have calculated for so long. What did you get? Kong Nanfei asked. The attack from the five barbarians, was ominous for the great Zhou dynasty, Mo Tianyu said solemnly and put a few coins away. Kong Nanfei let out a sign upon hearing this. Gripping the coins, Mo Tianyu thought for a moment and added, however, it is an auspicious moment for the capital city in the book pavilion. An auspicious moment? Kong Nanfei almost choked with laughter. His face immediately turned somber. Mo Tianyu was not pleased by the change of Kong Nanfei's expression. Why was he so volatile? His calculations were not wrong. Why did Kong Nanfei look at him so disparagingly? It was fair and reasonable for him to predict that the attack would be ominous since young Master Lu was in seclusion. Kong Nanfei ignored Mo Tianyu. He turned his head and looked up at the second floor of the book pavilion with a heavy feeling in his heart. The situation of the battles in West County, North County, and South County had all stabilized. Nevertheless, one report went beyond anyone's expectations. Donghai Gate, the gate tower where Dongyang County fought against the Dongyi of the Five Barbarians, had not been breached. Without cultivators, it had been almost impossible for Dongyang County to defend themselves against the Dongyi army who had mysterious Dongyi soldiers. Dongyang County was the weakest link of the four counties. There was a dragon gate at Dongyang County too. Nevertheless, the Dragon Gate there was a forbidden place that burned to ashes anyone who dared to step inside. Therefore, Dongyang County had not raised its own cultivators. The army of Dongyang County compensated for the lack of cultivators with their madness. They blocked the attack from the Dongyi army with their flesh and blood and chose to risk their lives to stop the mysterious Dongyi soldiers. Thankfully, there weren't any sinister cultivators in the Dongyi army like the other counties faced. That was how they withstood the invasion for the moment. South County. The penurious painter encaged the muscular man with his painting. 
Tang Yimo broke away from the giant ball. Blue veins bulging and blood dripping, he shot out of the ball and appeared in front of the muscular man. The muscular man shook himself free easily. After all, although Sima Qingshan had a technique that could trap him, he was still not powerful enough. He had just gained his qi core not too long ago. Although he built up his spirit qi in the dragon gate with extraordinary talent, he couldn't suppress the muscular man who was at the peak foundation building realm. Tang Yimo charged headlong like a formidable beast. He glared at the muscular man who looked at him calmly and elegantly. Tang Yimo lifted his knee high and pressed it against the man's chin. He kicked the man into the air with tremendous force. Then, he launched his tempest-like attack. Countless punches rained on the man's body. The man never reached the ground. Tang Yimo would kick him higher every time he was about to fall. Unable to touch the ground, the man couldn't control the dirt and mud. Bang! Panic-stricken, the Nanman army began to retreat. The citizens of South County, on the contrary, were excited at the triumph. This was it. Beat that pretentious Nanman jerk to death. Tang Yimo's attack was like a raging tempest. Every punch was exceptionally fierce. Under such a constant pummeling, the elegant look the man had on his face finally cracked like a broken terracotta sculpture. The cracks stretched over his face like a spider web. Tang Yimo leapt high in the air, swung his leg, and smashed it down like a giant rotor. Bang! The man's body broke into thousands of tiny pieces and fell to the earth. Tang Yimo landed on his feet and gasped for breath. Then, he lost his grip over the second meridian and couldn't hold on to it any longer. Rain drizzled from the sky. Tang Yimo stood up and looked at the ground. He saw the broken pieces squirm together, coalescing. Soon, it morphed into a terracotta figure and became the muscular man again, with fingers crossed in front of his chest. West County. The blonde man, whose neck had been stabbed by Mo Luki's silver scissors several times already, let out a low laugh. His body emitted frightening energy and radiated a white brilliance. He transformed into a man of light with tremendous power bursting out of his body. It repelled Mo Luki and the rest. In the ravine created by the knife, the demonic monk put his palms together and slowly walked out with his kasaya flapping in the wind. He stared at Ni Chongqing viciously. The butcher was wearing a white robe and holding a butcher's knife at the top of the gate tower. A burst of energy was released from the demonic monk's body and transformed into a bloody Buddha that loomed behind him. North County. The three ferocious fire phoenixes were blasted away. The Lord of Zerong slowly tore his skin mask off and revealed a burnt face beneath. A flash of fire burst out of his skin and filled the air with a strong sense of oppression. Everyone on the battlefield felt this enormous pressure. Above Bila Lake, fluffy snow danced above the tranquil lake and created a splendid silver world. Lu Fan pressed one hand flat on the Earth's origin. Mysterious waves rippled across the lake. The five elements inside the golden ball flowed in harmony with the waves. Lu Fan's eyes flickered. He saw the bloody Buddha and the blonde man who transformed into light in West County, the Lord of Zerong who had taken off his skin mask in North County, and the terracotta figure of dirt and mud in South County. Are they finally getting serious? Lu Fan's lips curled up. The poor painter in South County, the poultry woman in North County, and the butcher in West County. These people had successfully made the wanderers take them seriously. Based on their strength, these wanderers had reached the internal organs realm with certain elements. They were quite powerful. However, it didn't matter if how seriously they took the battles. Lu Fan was only using them to practice. Almost there, Lu Fan's eyes focused on the Earth's origin surging in front of him. He exhaled a long breath. In the next moment, his white robe started making cracking sounds. Pressing on the golden ball of origin, Lu Fan's gripped the ball tighter. Bang! Looking at him from Bila Lake Island, Ni Yu, Ning Zhao, and the others raised their heads in terror. Their bodies turned cold and numb. They saw the clouds above the island start to swirl furiously. A huge amount of spirit chi coalesced and transfigured into a hand made out of spirit chi. The hand of spirit chi grasped the golden ball. Its grip tightened and tightened as Lu Fan exerted more strength. Finally, the golden ball that represented the Earth's origin was crushed. Bang! With a terrifying noise, energy shot into the clouds. Like a giant rock thrown into a lake, the energy stirred the clouds. Bang! 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 It sounded like a drum beating under the sun. 
The entire Great Zhou Dynasty felt the dramatic change. Liu Fan's one hand stretched out, five colored dots of light in his palm. His other hand pointed at the sky and he released a vast amount of spirit qi deployment. The whole sky became a sea of spirit qi. Inside Bila Lake, water splattered. The little responsive dragon spread its wings and inhaled the spirit qi of heaven and earth excitedly and screeched at the sky. Waves sloshed violently on the surface of Bila Lake. Lu Fan sat upright in the Thousand Blades chair. The white robe and his hair blew in the strong wind. He thrust his palm holding the five colored dots of light at the sky. Then, he flapped his sleeve as if sweeping the five colored dots of light away. The dots of light transformed into five rays of light and shot into the sky. The five types of elemental energy, metal, wood, water, fire, and earth, filled the air. A barrier that was accompanied by numerous ice-cold iron chains appeared in front of Lufan. The chained barrier represented the shackles that restrained the heaven and earth. Lufan used a finger to point at the barrier and broke the shackles. At that moment, the sky, changed. Chapter 176, Transformation of the World Bailuo, Lake Island. In the instant that the earth's origin was crushed by Lufan and dispersed out, the entire world seemed to change. The clouds high in the sky transformed into spiral shapes, and thunder continuously sounded like the beating of drums, as though a storm was approaching. Looking as though a large boulder had been tossed into a lake, the layer of clouds rippled with huge waves. The Wawang continent was a low-level martial world, and despite Lu Fan's transformations in the Hidden Dragon Ridge and Dragon Gate Secret Realm, though he had reached the top of the low-level martial world, it was ultimately still a low-level martial world. They could not condense the Earth's origin. The most the cultivators could do was reach the internal organs realm, where their organs were tempered. They could not derive their own elemental spirit chi. These were the shackles born of the world, and walls the world had put in place. If Lu Fan wanted to turn the Wuwang continent into a mid-level martial world, he had to break these shackles and tear down these walls. Normally, condensing the Earth's origin was a feat that would require Lu Fan to spend countless years of work to accomplish. It might take him a hundred years, a thousand years, or even ten thousand years to reach a standard where the world could reach the next level. After all, relative to the evolution of a world, the time span of a thousand or ten thousand years was just a blip and not a long time at all. However, Lu Fan did not have that much time to spare. As such, he did not dispel the spiritual sense of that lord of the plane. Instead, using a special technique, he set up a formation, absorbing about a third of the origin of another mid-level martial world. It was not that he did not want to continue absorbing the origin, but just like how there were limits to how much people could eat, overeating and becoming bloated would be counterproductive. The Wawang continent was still unable to withstand the entire origin of a mid-level martial world. After condensing the origin, Lu Fan even spent some time condensing its elements. The origin had a will of its own, and ever since it was released by Lu Fan and rushed into the sky, it was like a frisky child, bringing huge changes to the entire Wuwang continent. Lu Fan looked forward to these changes, and he was even more interested to see whether others like Ni Chongqing would seize this opportunity to transform themselves. When the wanderers colluded with the five barbarians to invade the Great Zhou, the reason Lu Fan chose not to interfere was to allow everyone to gain experience and apply pressure on them. Everyone's potential and base abilities would only be released and transform if they were pressured to do so. Then, in the instant that the Earth's origin was released, they would be able to gain the most significant benefits from the Earth's origin. Compared to the secret realms of the Hidden Dragon Ridge and Dragon Gate, the condensing of the Earth's origin was the greatest immortal encounter that Lu Fan had set up. It was an immortal encounter that everyone could partake in equally. The small responsive dragon spread its wings. It was a heavenly dragon descendant and was more sensitive to encounters. Opening its mouth wide, it stopped suppressing its body and transformed into a heavenly dragon 10 meters long. With a flap of its wings, it blew up a gale. It let out a deafening dragon's roar toward the sky, filled with a mighty pressure. The concentration of spirit she in the world seemed to boil and started to soar up suddenly. Sitting in his wheelchair, Lu Fan's white robes flapped loudly in the wind, as his hair was tossed about. With his eyes closed and his lips curled up in a small smile, he felt the transformation of the entire Wuwang continent. Behind him, the small responsive dragon was breathing large amounts of spirit qi. 
And it was not just the small responsive dragon. The morning chrysanthemums, Billa peach blossom, and other plants on the island all began to take in and exhale spirit chi in a frenzy. They were plants, but at this moment, they seemed to have their own spirituality. The fish in Bailuo Lake started to pop out of the surface far from where the responsive dragon was, opening their mouths and breathing out bubbles at the surface of the water. Some of the fishes even leapt out just slightly above the lake's surface, as though they wanted to catch this momentary, fleeting encounter in the world. This was a transformation that all living creatures in the world could enjoy equally. On the lake island, Ni Yu had just taken out an elixir coated in sugar, but with a clatter, she had dropped it on the ground yet again. She was shocked stiff. What? What just happened? Did the young master do something incredible again? Ning Zhao's reaction was particularly apparent. The spirit she within her body was boiling, and it was boiling in response to something. She glanced at the lonesome young master who was suspended above the lake island, and her long eyelashes fluttered. He had his eyes closed, the corners of his lips curled up in a smile, and seemed to have cast aside his worldly cares. In that instant, the young master, looked like an immortal. What are you waiting for? Sit down cross-legged and temper your body. Lu Fan's voice was like a grand command that resounded in Ning Zhao's ears. Ning Zhao shuddered, and without any hesitation, she assumed a seated cross-legged position in front of the stone steps of the White Jade City Pavilion. The spirit chi in the world was so concentrated it felt like it might condense into liquid droplets, and it passed into her body wildly. At that moment, she even felt like it would suffocate her. Ni Yu and Yi Yu also reacted. Their hearts were trembling. This was, a great immortal encounter. A spirit chi storm. A real spirit chi storm. A spirit chi storm had truly occurred on Bila Lake. Moreover, it was not just that, but to a large degree, this spirit chi storm could even engulf Bila City or even, the entire great Zhou dynasty. Yi Yu crossed her legs and began practicing the cultivation methods in her mind. The cultivation methods she once thought to be profound were now clear in her mind as though it had been engraved there, and she had never had experienced such clarity in her thoughts before. The spirit Shi surged into her body, continuing to toss and turn inside her. Ni Yu trotted to the island, retrieving a black pot, and put it on her head as she started her cultivation. At this moment, the black pot shimmered with a bright glow, as it continuously absorbed spirit chi. This spirit chi then passed through the black pot, surging into Ni Yu's body. Ni Yu's small face was flushed red with excitement. The feeling was similar to eating a cold and refreshing iced watermelon on a hot summer's day and eating a mouthful of spicy hot pot on a snowy winter's day. It was really, comforting. The lake island was the epicenter of this eruption of spirit chi and the source of the rejuvenation of the earth's origin. Spirit Chi was naturally abundant, at this moment, in Bila City. Inside Lu Manor, Lu Chongkong, who was enjoying a good conversation over tea with LV Dongxuan, felt a shock run through his body. He and LV Dongxuan looked at each other in the eye, and the two seemed to see a look of disbelief in each other's eyes. This as, LV Dongxuan frantically put down the teacup in his hands and walked briskly out of Lu Manor, his big gold chains shaking. Lu Chongkong also made his way outside, and when the two men saw the huge spiraling clouds in the sky, the color quickly drained from their faces. The spirit chi is so rich, how can the spirit chi in Bila City also become so rich? Lu Chongkong gasped in surprise. LV Dongxuan's face was quivering. The young master has come out of the retreat. The true era of cultivators has come. LV Dongxuan touched a finger to the gold chain hanging from his neck. His entire body was trembling, as he was shaking with excitement. He had lived more than half of his life already, and he could actually get to see such a spectacular event. In this life, he had no regrets. Lu Chongkong immediately sat down cross-legged, following his instincts, and he began practicing the Ksitagarbha Sutra, cultivation method. In this instant, in this very moment, he felt like his mind was unobstructed, and as though he was receiving divine assistance, he seemed to have instant understanding. This was an encounter. A great encounter. Lu Chongkong opened his eyes and looked toward the lake island with a complicated expression. Fanner. What have you done? Asterisk 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 the capital city. Outside the book pavilion. Snow was falling heavily, covering the bluestone path in a thick layer of white snow. 
A luxurious carriage was parked outside the door on standby. The driver was curled up in front of the carriage, rubbing his hands together and breathing warm air into his palms to warm them up. Kong Nanfei helped the master out of the book pavilion, with Mo Tianyu carrying a backpack and following behind them. Master, you're really heading to Dongyang County? Kong Nanfei asked with a frown. Although Dongyang County had held back the attacks from the Dongyi, it was still an extremely dangerous place. You don't need to worry about me. Just properly protect the capital city. You're a court official after all. If His Majesty does anything outrageous, someone will certainly punish him. Do not butt heads with His Majesty, Kong Shu said. He had grown older, and his breathing had become weaker than ever, as though he was about to fall asleep at any moment. I have two letters with me here. Get people you can trust with your life and send one to the West County and one to the North County, Kong Shu said. Kong Nanfei received the letters. After looking at the recipients' names on the envelopes, his eyes unconsciously narrowed. He raised his head to look up in disbelief at Kong Shu. Master, do your cultivation properly, and stay true to the core of Confucianism. Don't be like your father, you are a good child. The wrinkles on the master's aged face bunched up as he raised his hand. He had wanted to pat Kong Nanfei on the head, but he was only able to reach Kong Nanfei's shoulders. He swept off the snow that had gathered there. Carrying the luggage on his back, Mo Tianyu's face quivered as he looked at the master who was in the dusk of his life. He had the feeling that his own hexagram was kind of unreliable. Did the hexagram reading not show that the book pavilion and the master would have great fortune? Old Mo, take good care of the master, Kong Nanfei said seriously. I will definitely bring the master back safely, Mo Tianyu replied, nodding solemnly. Following this, he ducked into the carriage along with the master. The snow was fluttering in the air on this wintry day, covering the roof of the book pavilion in a thick layer of snow. The banana tree in the courtyard was bent over from the weight of the snow, like the old and rickety back of the master. The wooden wheels squeaked as they rolled through the thick snow. Kong Nanfei let out a breath of warm air. As he looked at the two gullies in the snow plowed out by the horse carriage, he clenched the letters in his hand tightly. As the carriage moved into the distance, all of a sudden, the master, wrapped in a velvet robe inside the carriage, opened his turbid eyes that had seen much over his long years of life. Brilliant colors were sparkling in his eyes, hum? Reaching out a trembling hand, he lifted the screen of the carriage, as the heavy snowfall immediately poured in through the window. Raising his hand, he allowed a piece of snow to fall into his palm. The master's gaze, which was well past his prime, unexpectedly lit up. Is this the real reason Ping An ordered the fighting to be stopped for three months? Thinking about the entire world, this is the White Jade City. This old man, is unworthy. The master sighed out loud with a smile. From this day onward, the era of the hundred schools of philosophy had truly ended. The falling petals of snow melted, turning into an air current that flowed inside the carriage. Still, the master let out a laugh. Even so, this old man can bloom with a light like a scorching sun, even in the dusk of his life. This way, there will be no regrets. It's just a pity that going to the lake island to spend my last days is probably no longer possible. Asterisk 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 asterisk. Zijin Palace, Royal Garden. As snow fell from the sky, Yuan Shu carried a wooden barrel containing raw meat, as an old eunuch led two younger eunuchs standing behind him. He took pieces of raw meat and threw them into the lake, as the black dragon devoured them at a rapid pace. Yuan Shu's eyes narrowed as he smiled dotingly, watching the black dragon gulping down the raw meat. Suddenly, with a piece of raw meat in its jaw, the black dragon raised its head to stare at the changing sky. In its eyes, a gleam of excitement suddenly appeared. Tossing aside the raw meat, the black dragon opened its mouth to let out a loud dragon's roar. The layer of ice covering the surface of the green pond began to crack apart, the water from the pond rising up between the cracks. Yu Wen Shu was immediately taken aback, not knowing why the black dragon was suddenly in a frenzy. Asterisk 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 it was not just the capital city and Bila city. The biggest reactions were at the frontier garrisons of the three counties, which were considered to be the bloodiest fields of battle. South County. The figure formed by the accumulation of dirt lost all its elegance and indifference. The strategic mindset he initially had was now shattered into pieces, as though it had been crushed. 
Raising his head, he looked at the sky, which was releasing ripples of spirit chi. The color of his face instantly changed. This is, the aura of the earth's origin? The burly man was dumbfounded. The earth's origin? Why would the earth's origin be born? Was this not a low-level martial world? No, this world is leveling up. It's going to become, a mid-level martial world. The burly man seemed to have thought of something, as his entire body quivered. As for all the people in South County, they also underwent tremendous changes. The dragon gate in South County began to quake. The coiled dragon began to roll about in the mud, growling in excitement. Within the dragon gate, a majestic spirit chi storm swept through. Like a hurricane, it rushed out of the dragon gate, fanning out and spreading across the various parts of South County. Nanjin City. Sima Qingshan, who was seated atop the city walls, suddenly opened his eyes. His mind suddenly became clear, and he looked up in the sky in disbelief. He seemed to hear hints of a resounding and commanding voice in his ears. Sima Qingshan had spent three months among the terracotta warriors condensing his spirit qi to its peak state through his painting. At this moment, the shackles in his mind were violently broken apart. He practiced the painting cultivation method passed on to him by an immortal, and it was as though he could clearly visualize how the spirit qi was flowing within his own body. In this instant, he seemed to have a lucky breakthrough, entering into the internal organs realm. A majestic spirit chi was coming from within South County, transforming into a vortex that was gathering and funneling on top of his head. It was a baptism of spirit chi scouring Sima Qingshan's body. On the battlefield, Tang Yimo used his eight meridians escaping demonic technique, absorbing the spirit chi, as the cool spirit chi allowed him to heal his injuries. Jing Yu gripped the Jing Heaven Sword, as he stood in place, entering into a deep meditative state. Before his very eyes, there seemed to be a surging wave of golden light, blending together with his sword spirit. The sword spirit that had given him an initial insight now seemed to soar rapidly. This left Jing Yu with an inexplicable feeling of pleasure. It felt as though, long ago, when he encountered enemies he could not defeat, he would escape at tremendous speeds, he had the same kind of feeling when his enemies wanted to hit him but could not, a sense of, comfort. It was not only Jing Yu who felt this. In the Taoist pavilion, Xie Yunling and many students also felt it. Additionally, the swordsmen of the sword pavilion seemed to sense the surging spirit Qi in the world at this moment and began their transformation. All of this was seen by the burly man, as his expression grew more and more ugly. Asterisk 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 South County. The evil bald Buddhist monk and man of light incarnated as a blonde man raised their heads in disbelief. On top of Harao Gate, the unshaven corners of Ni Chongqing's mouth perked up unconsciously. Raising his hand, a butcher's knife immediately shot into his hand. He sat cross-legged on top of the city gates, letting out a chuckle that lingered in the city gates. I get it now, so the reason the young master stopped the fighting for three months was all for this moment? As expected of the young master, he knows everything. Ni Changqing laughed out loud. Four spirit chi swirls appeared on his body, greedily swallowing the spirit chi that was fanning out and being released from the Dongyan River Dragon Gate. The spirit chi swirl at his heart began to condense gradually. His internal organs would soon be shaped. Ni Changqing looked toward Mingyue and said, Girl, seize this rare encounter. Her ten fingers were bleeding, and she was wearing a veil. Mingyue was startled and also felt the changes in the world. She hurriedly began to practice her cultivation, on the battlefield outside Harao Gate. The overlord was exuding demonic chi from his entire body. Wielding an axe in one hand and a shield in the other, he felt the white snow falling from the sky on his body, feeling the rich spirit chi embodied within the snow. He suddenly burst out in laughter. The heavens, have not forsaken our western Liang. In the next instant, a huge swirl formed above the overlord head, as it sucked in spirit chi. LV Mudui and Mo Luki had already assumed cross-legged positions long ago. In the instant that the earth's origin was condensed, all the cultivators in the world felt something. Everyone in the world experienced the same thing. Everyone wanted to seize this rare opportunity. After the initial shock, the evil bald Buddhist monk had a bottomless ferocity in his eyes. Kill. The man of light also nodded. Looking each other in the eyes, the aura of a peak foundation building level was frantically released. At this moment, 
neither of them was planning to hold back. It was because they discovered that something about this low-level martial world was strange. Boom. The evil bald Buddhist monk stepped out, and it was as though fresh blood was surging, and countless wailing souls were churning. Even so, he only took a single step forward and did not dare to make another move. The reason was, very faintly, through the misty spirit chi, they seemed to be able to see. A figure seated in a wheelchair slowly opening his eyes to look at them impassively. A single look. It was enough to take their courage to continue to act, and reduce it to nothing. Chapter 177. I, the overlord, am not just a punching bag. The gaze coming from far away seemed to have closed the distance in an instant. The bald Buddhist monk was drenched in a cold sweat. He wanted to withdraw the leg he had stepped out with, but he was unable to do so. The gaze was as warm as jade, but seemed to carry the weight of mountains and left him powerless to take back his step. Who is that? A shocked look was etched on the bald Buddhist monk's face. He felt his heart slightly trembling. The youth sitting in the wheelchair seemed to have a connection to the entire world. Just based on the dreadful pressure being applied to him, he felt like he was facing an old golden elixir realm monster. Is he the lord of the plane of this world? The bald Buddhist monk and the blonde man looked at each other in the eyes as their hearts quaked. The world was undergoing huge changes. The overlord, who had just entered the internal organs realm, was using this opportunity to transform and enhance himself. The demonic chi surrounding his body had turned into a swirl above his head. The overlord bellowed with gut-splitting, joyful laughter that also carried a tinge of melancholy, which resounded across the battlefield. The bald Buddhist monk and the blonde man really wanted to interrupt the transformations of the overlord, Ni Chongqing, and the other cultivators. However, a pair of eyes seemed to be watching them from the darkness, so they did not dare to make any reckless moves. The bald Buddhist monk turned to the blonde man, asking solemnly, Is this world's lord of the plain, an old golden elixir realm monster? That's impossible. An old golden elixir realm monster can only be born from a mid-level martial world. Even a mid-level martial world at its early stages would have difficulty producing an old golden elixir realm monster. This world cannot even be considered a mid-level martial world, so how could anyone be at the golden elixir realm? Perhaps the will of the Lord of the Plain and the Earth's origin have merged together at this moment, resulting in the massive pressure we are feeling. A low-level martial world basically lacks the resources and energy to train up an old golden elixir realm monster, the blonde man replied, full of certainty. The bald Buddhist monk had actually come to the same conclusions after analyzing the situation. The two nodded their heads seriously. At this moment, there were three choices placed before them. They could retreat, they could kill the people who were currently undergoing their transformations, or, they could wait where they were. The birth of the Earth's origin made them understand that this world was not as simple as they had thought. It was basically impossible for a low-level martial world to birth the Earth's origin without any prior signs or warnings. When they had descended to this world and conducted a thorough investigation, they had not found any trace of the Earth's origin. And yet, at this very moment, the Earth's origin had actually condensed and emerged unexpectedly? Was someone messing with them? The blonde man dispersed the golden light coming from his body. While looking at the bald Buddhist monk, a soft mumble came from his lips. What do we do? Escape? No, let's wait and see. Maybe this lord of the plain is only putting up a strong front. If he was really able to kill us, why hasn't he made any move to do so? Are you serious? If there's even the smallest chance that this lord of the plain is in the golden elixir realm, we're doomed. The conversation between the two was progressing very quickly. In the end, the two came to a decision, they were not going to run. The chances of a golden elixir realm cultivator existing in a low-level martial world were minuscule. And this would only be possible if the entire world's resources were used by a single person. However, if that were as the case, the foundation-building realm cultivators like the Overlord and Ni Chengqing would not exist. As such, the bald Buddhist monk and blonde man were willing to bet that the Lord of the Plain of this world was not a golden elixir realm cultivator. They were betting that this Lord of the Plain was only borrowing the Origin's power to put up a front, faking his status as a golden elixir realm cultivator. Naturally, they both felt in their hearts that there was a high chance their bet was not off the mark. Asterisk 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 this was a transformation affecting the entire world. 
When Lu Fan released the Earth's origin into the world, he tore down the world's walls and broke the shackles with a single finger. Right now, the obstacles preventing the Wuwang continent from leveling up to become a mid-level martial world were gone. Now, at any time it chooses, the continent could become a mid-level martial world, on the condition that an existence above the internal organs realm appears on the continent. Of course, Lu Fan's strength was not being considered here. The turbulent spirit Qi began to surge, flowing out through the eight great dragon gates and practically rushing into the various regions of the great Zhou dynasty. Regions with a dragon gate would have a richer concentration of spirit Qi. And conversely, regions without a dragon gate would have a proportionate reduction in the concentration of spirit Qi. Even so, there was no doubt. The spirit Qi being released by the eight great dragon gates was enough to allow the entire great Zhou dynasty to be transformed. At the very least, everyone had the chance to bathe in the spirit Qi and had a chance of becoming a cultivator. This is a tide of spirit Qi. Several people called the event that occurred without warning on this day a spirit Qi tide. Everyone in the world could receive spirit Qi equally. Initially, when the eight great dragon gates appeared in the world, the people learned of the existence of immortal encounters. If a man were able to get an immortal encounter, then this person would be able to cultivate a fundamental chi and use it as a starting point to cultivate unmatched power. However, because the dragon gates were all under the control of the imperial court in the White Jade City, there was no way for most of the factions in the world to get their hands on an immortal encounter, no matter how much they wanted it. Yet on this day, they did not have to worry about this anymore. From this day onward, the world could become a world of cultivators. The spirit chi tide was released from the dragon gates, rolling out across the world and giving everyone an equal opportunity to bathe in spirit chi. Whether one was able to become a cultivator would now depend on one's own natural talent and abilities. The spirit chi also surged up into the atmosphere, merging with the timely snowflakes and drifting back down into the world of man in the form of large clumps of heavy snowfall. Some of the spirit chi merged with the slight drizzle, spreading across the land as the rain wet the things below. However, while there were numerous people in the world, those who were truly capable of gathering spirit chi into their chi core and becoming a cultivator, were few and far between. Regardless of this fact, on this day, the world had changed with the eruption of spirit chi. The great Zhou dynasty was engulfed in a cultivation craze. Asterisk 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 in West County, the bald Buddhist monk and the blonde man did not dare to act, as they were being restricted by Lu Fan. At the same time, the two wanderers in South County and North County also chose not to act. They had also seen the gaze Lu Fan was shooting at them from his wheelchair. A single look was enough to make their bodies stiffen up. Is the gaze he's shooting at us wrapped in the power of the Earth's origin? The Lord of Zerong in North County muttered to himself. After quite some time, the pressure that Lu Fan had applied to him was gone but he could still faintly feel Lu Fan's gaze on him like a floating cloud, as though it was there as a warning. A spirit Qi storm had also burst out in North County. Everyone, excluding the wanderers, was bathing in spirit Qi. Since the wanderers were not from this world, they did not receive this favor and were unable to absorb the spirit Qi. On the other hand, anyone who was not a wanderer, even the wrong people, were given the right to bathe themselves in spirit Qi. On the North County battlefield, Bai Qingyao stood stock still in a daze. Just moments ago, she suddenly felt like she had been exposed to the secrets of the world. She had seen a ray of crimson light bloom before her eyes. Following that, her understanding of Nine Phoenix's transformation began to grow in her mind rapidly. Parts that she had been unable to comprehend or be enlightened about were now becoming clear to her as though understanding it was completely natural. She felt like a gust of cold air had rushed into her mind allowing her the ability to think and understand to grow more and become more powerful. Spirit Qi had begun to surge into her body in a steady stream. The feedback from this was then felt in the bodies of her three chicks. Lil Phoenix One was the first to gain spirit intellect and now was able to benefit the most from being bathed in spirit Qi. It spread its wings, and the sound of its cry was filled with the grandeur of one at peak performance. The other two chicks, Lil Phoenix Two and Lil Phoenix Three, began to cry out as well, following Lil Phoenix One's lead. Zhang Li, who had been pulled out of danger by Kai Lian, stretched out a hand, catching the snowflakes falling slowly from the sky in his palm. When the snow melted, a wisp of spirit qi flowed through his palm, entering his body. 
Spirit Qi. This is Spirit Qi. Zhang Li's emotional state was slightly complicated. He did not expect this. Despite not choosing to enter the Dragon Gate and get Spirit Qi from within, he was still able to receive Spirit Qi on this day. Zhang Li had never entered the Dragon Gate of the Black Dragon in the capital, only because he did not want the young emperor to fear him. Yu Wen Shu had distanced himself from him, believing that he was the one who had murdered the previous emperor, Yu Wen Tuo. The rumors being spread back then had also caused an uproar in the capital. In the present day, Yu Wen Shu had started to become somewhat distrustful and skeptical, ever since he had gained control over the Black Dragon Guard. In truth, the one Yu Wen Shu feared the most, aside from West County's overlord, South County's Tang Xianxiang, and North County's Tan Tai Zan, was not Bai Luo's young master Lu but him, Zhang Li. The most feared after him would be the imperial advisor, Kong Shu. Back then, the person Yu Wen Tuo trusted the most was Kong Shu, followed by Bai Function's successor, Zhang Li. However, in the end, Yu Wen Tuo had met a sudden death. Now, because of that, Yu Wen Shu naturally would become more cautious, not wanting to follow in the previous emperor's footsteps. For this reason, Zhang Li had chosen to do as the imperial advisor had done and refused to enter the Dragon Gate and absorb the spirit Qi within as a show of sincerity. As Zhang Li watched the wisp of spirit Qi entering through his palm, his emotions were in turmoil. Kai Lian had also absorbed spirit Qi, and it was as though the gates to a new world had been flung open for her. It was because the Earth's origin had just begun to condense. The current situation was not restrictive to anyone, and the success rate of concentrating spirit Qi was much higher than before. As long as one possessed the natural talent for becoming a cultivator, it was possible to concentrate spirit Qi. The only exceptions would be extremely ordinary people who were completely unable to absorb spirit chi. Otherwise, basically anyone would be able to take in some spirit chi. Asterisk 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 Bila Lake Island. Sitting in the Thousand Blades chair, Lu Fan was in the eye of the spirit chi storm. However, he was not affected by the spirit chi at all, even though his hair and robes were flapping in the wind. Even so, like an immortal who had transcended the material world, he did not absorb an ounce of spirit chi. He was sensing the changes in the great Zhou dynasty. With this transformation of the world, the region primarily affected was still the great Zhou dynasty. As for regions outside of the great Zhou dynasty, there might be some remnants of spirit chi that flowed out, but the concentration would be far too weak. As such, Lu Fan's observation was currently mainly limited to the great Zhou dynasty. Inside Bila City, since the city was the closest to the epicenter of the transformation. The people saw the strange phenomenon occurring above them. A colossal vortex of clouds in the sky suddenly appeared. It was accompanied by a blue glow that covered the whole world. It was the spread of spirit chi. Everyone was stunned. It was as though they had seen an immortal. They all hurried to kneel on the ground one after the other, bowing down piously. There were some who were suffering from chills and aches, whose health improved under the shower of spirit chi and who were pleasantly surprised. There were some who were weak while others were suffering from kidney diseases. But the shower of spirit chi replenished their chi and blood, thereby strengthening their bodies. There were some who were severely ill, but the shower of spirit chi alleviated their illnesses, making them cry tears of joy. These people were all affected by this phenomenon that seemed like an immortal caused it. They knelt down piously, worshipping and praying, as they chanted various prayers. For those who have gathered spirit qi, they all felt a warm surging flow in their qi core. This was a sign that they had become cultivators. Of course, many of them were regular people who had no idea they were now cultivators. All the happenings of Bila City were ultimately reflected in Lu Fan's eyes, and he lightly touched a finger to the phoenix feather arm. The spirit qi storm did not last for too long. The Earth's origin had assimilated into the world and would now grow stronger as the people of the world grew stronger. This would even allow the Earth's origin to be strengthened to a mid-level martial world and after that to a high-level martial world. Of course, if the Earth's origin were left to grow stronger at its own imperceptibly slow pace, it would take countless millennia. However, right now, there was a single hand that was pushing the growth of the origin forward. The time it would take had shrunk considerably. Asterisk 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 asterisk. West County. Ni Chongqing opened his eyes. 
He was sitting cross-legged atop the city walls of Harau Gate, his white shirt flapping loudly in the wind. His entire body was exuding a radiant glow, as though he would grow wings and fly like an immortal. On the surface of his body, five swirls could be faintly seen. The five swirls were positioned at his five organs, heart, liver, spleen, lungs, and kidneys. Tempering the five internal organs and uncovering the treasures hidden within the human body were the steps to reaching the internal organs realm. And now, Ni Chongqing used the changes brought about by the condensing of the Earth's origin to finish tempering his internal organs. The five swirls joined up with each other, and almost imperceptibly, they seemed to transform into a blurry coat of spirit Qi armor. Even Ni Chongqing, who was firmly in control of his emotions at all times, felt an irrepressible excitement growing within him at this very moment. With a motion of his hand, the butcher's knife flew into the air. Ni Chongqing strode forward placing a foot on the stone atop the city walls. Looking down, he watched the bald Buddhist monk and blonde man below him. Alien evil spirit, Ni Chongqing muttered under his breath. In the Dragon Gate secret realm, in the long corridor of the central palace, he had spied the secret to the destruction of the ancients. It had been all because of these evil spirits. Because of this, Ni Chongqing had been feeling an immense pressure on himself. Over the past three months, as he traveled the world, he did not stop his cultivation for a single moment. It was all so that he would be strong enough to fight against the evil spirits. Tightly gripping th handle of the butcher knife, the five spirit qi swirls around Ni Chongqing's body surged, as he leapt down from the city walls while covered in an armor of spirit qi. The overlord also opened his eyes all of a sudden. The demonic qi surrounded his body as his gaze grew sharp and savage. Tightening his grip on his black axe and blood red shield, he rushed out together with Ni Chongqing. They headed toward the bald Buddhist monk and blonde man with deadly intent. The baldy is mine. The overlord growled. Ni Chongqing shot the overlord a sidelong glance but did not dispute it. The overlord probably wanted to exact his bloody revenge for being put down by the bald Buddhist monk before. The overlord was just that hot tempered. Initially, before the world had changed, the overlord, Ni Chongqing, and others like them could keenly sense the shackles and constraints holding them back. But now, with the world's transformation, it was as though these shackles and restraints had been shattered. They could clearly sense that the internal organs realm was not the end of their growth. Perhaps they could grow even stronger by stepping into a level beyond the internal organs realm. On the West County battlefield, like a demon, the overlord bellowed with rage, the booming sound echoing across the battlefield. The brave soldiers of Western Liang had also finished their quick absorption of spirit qi. Their spirits were invigorated, and it was as though they had been completely refreshed. Following behind the overlord, they continued their deadly charge toward the armies of the Maurya Empire in Gafang. As the bald Buddhist monk watched the overlord aggressively charging toward him, a hideous expression formed on his face. So he intends to use me as a training partner for this crowd? The audacity of this lord of the plain. If that's the case, this poor monk will send these people to the deepest levels of hell. The bald Buddhist monk's blood-stained kasaya was suddenly lifted up as he ferociously put his palms together. In the next moment, there was a bloody surge behind him. A golden statue of a Buddha that seemed to be made of pure gold appeared behind the Buddhist monk. He put his palms together in prayer, chanting out the names of the Buddha. The names of the Buddha, which were normally auspicious, were now uttered with murderous intent. The eyes of the golden Buddha statue opened, tears of blood dripping from its eyes. It was as though it was looking upon a field of slaughter or eternal hell. Behind them, the group of old apathetic monks draped in red cloth also joined in the chanting. The sound of the recited names of the Buddha seemed to transform into a spiderweb, slowing down the overlord charge. And at this very moment, atop the city walls, the sound of a pippa spread out. The young girl held the pippa with a half-covered face, as her slender blood-stained fingers played a tune on the pippa yet again. It was apparent that the sound of the pippa had been transformed. It actually managed to suppress the recited names of the Buddha. The sound of the pippa even brought the overlord blood to a boil, rousing his fighting spirit. The overlord turned his head to look at the young girl atop the city walls. A confused look flashed across his eyes. Then, he suddenly hurled out the long axe in his hands. In the blink of an eye, 
His long axe cut through the swath of the red cloth worn by the old monks, who were reciting the names of the Buddha. Fresh blood splattered out, staining the ground red. Pulling with his demonic chi, the black axe returned to his hand. With a great leap, the overlord brandished his axe and rushed toward the bald Buddhist monk. The fresh blood covering the earth was dragged toward the overlord body, like threads of silk. While looking at the bald Buddhist monk, the overlord eyes were blazing with fighting spirit. He, the overlord, was not just a punching bag. Previously, you had beaten me. Now, I, the overlord, am going to return the favor. Chapter 178 The Buddhist Monk's Curse on Bila Lake The spirit chi storm had begun to subside. Lu Fan sat in his wheelchair, quietly floating above the surface of the lake. With a thought, he opened up the system page, Host, Lu Fan. Title. Chi Refiner, Permanent, Refined Chi Level. 3. Progress to Level 4 to 1, 156 10,000 Swisps. Soul Strength. 100, Redeemable. 13. Physique Strength. 10. Redeemable. 10. Spirit Chi. 86 Wisps. Available Points. 1,083 Points. As Lu Fan looked at the system page, he noticed that in the refined Chi level section, the total spirit Chi in his progress to level 4 was continually changing. In the blink of an eye, the number of Wisps would increase by 4 or 5. Obviously, this spirit Chi storm had provided him with a lot of spirit Chi. It could be said that it was extremely fruitful for him. The only way to describe how he felt, gaining so much spirit chi that fast, was extremely good. It was akin to watching the savings in his bank account jump up by hundreds of dollars every time he blinked. The refreshing feeling was like indulging on a rich, creamy, frozen ice cream on a hot summer's day. As Lu Fan had deployed his spirit chi, he had almost used up all of his spirit chi, and now he was rapidly regenerating it. Although he had condensed the Earth's origin, turning it into a spirit chi storm that swept across the world. However, there was still a broad spectrum of talents among the people of the world. Not everyone could gather spirit chi into their chi core and become a cultivator. As such, the rate at which Lu Fan's spirit chi was increasing was not out of this world. Even so, it was at a significant speed. In a short span of time, it had increased by 2,000 to 3,000. In other words, in the Great Zhou Dynasty, during this spirit chi storm, at the very least thousands of new cultivators had been born. In addition to the discounted commission he received from people like the Overlord and Ni Chongqing condensing spirit chi, it was still a considerably good rate of spirit chi growth. Lu Fan did not continue observing this. There was no point to keep blinking and watching the number rise. With a thought, he closed the system page. Thin moving threads appeared in his vision, crossing long distances and allowing him to observe the ongoing battles at the frontier garrisons. He did not kill these wanderers and instead left them alive because he wanted to provide a chance for Ni Chongqing, the overlord, and others to train. Without any pressure, there would be no room for actual growth. Since the Wuwang continent was still a low-level martial world, they still needed an existence above the internal organs realm to be born for them to become a mid-level martial world. And these wanderers would provide the push for Ni Chongqing and the others to grow. Lu Fan was not worried. It was because, at his current level of strength, these wanderers would not be able to pull off an upset. Asterisk 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 South County. The burly man that was made of mud slowly averted its gaze from the sky. He was different from the Buddhist monk and the blonde man. He was able to sense the energies in the world more keenly and had perceived that more elemental energy had appeared in this world. It was a sign that this world was on the brink of advancing to the next level. Still, the burly man did not choose to flee. He did not need to flee, after all, this was just a terracotta duplicate of him. He laced his fingers together, placing his hands in front of his chest. He was a refined and prudent person. As someone who had failed before, the burly man would not allow himself to fail again. As proof of his extreme caution, this body was just a duplicate he had brought together with his spell. Somewhere far away, bathed in the spirit Xi storm, the crowd of people opened their eyes. Sima Qingshan was standing on top of the city walls of Nanjin City. His lips were curled up slightly in a smile. The spirit Xi in his Qi core emerged. Following this, the blank picture scroll behind him began to unfurl slowly. Sima Qingshan gripped a brush in his hand, and using the falling rain from the sky as ink, 
he began to paint on the blank scroll. Sima Qingshan had entered the internal organs realm, and his spirit qi became more intense as he painted. The burly terracotta man sensed that he was being pulled into another world yet again. It was a world of beautiful mountains and flowing rivers. But though the scenery was beautiful, it left him with a sense of discomfort. Gentlemen, kill the enemy. Meanwhile, on the city walls. Sima Qingshan's clothes flapped loudly in the wind, as he slowly opened his mouth to speak. Tang Yimo stretched his neck as the bones cracked together. Due to the spirit Qi that bathed him, the injuries he sustained from using the eight meridians escaping demonic technique had long healed. Very nicely done. Tang Yimo smirked as he complimented Sima Qingshan's methods. Once again, he opened his second meridian. His hair stood up on end, and green veins surfaced on his skin, as his entire body shot forward explosively. His spirit qi was enveloped by his manic qi and blood, as he collided violently into the burly man, who transformed into a terracotta figure, with force like a huge boulder crashing down from atop a high mountain. The burly man awoke from his entrapment in the painting scroll. He opened his eyes slightly, and the attacks smashed into his body like a raging storm. The continuous series of blows left his body in distorted shapes. He slowly raised his hand, attempting to counterattack. The soil and stones on the ground also began to gather together with the raising of his hand. However, a ray of chi sword shot toward him from a distance, tearing him apart like an awl being drilled into a cloth pouch. The raised arm of the terracotta man was severed by the chi sword. A smooth cut. Wielding the Jing Heaven sword, Jing Yu wore a smile on his face. His sword was becoming stronger and stronger. Boom. The earth quaked violently, and the body of the terracotta man was broken into pieces, muddy sludge scattering across the ground. Tang Yimo landed on the ground. His entire body was like burning coal, as the rain that fell from the sky evaporated into white steam upon contact with his body. He stood up straight, waving his fist. Green veins densely covered his arm like small dragons. Kill. He shouted with a sonorous voice that resonated powerfully. The great armies of South County and the many soldiers of the South Manor Army looked up at Tang Yimo with expressions full of zeal. They raised their swords, their shouts tearing through the veil of rain. Kill. The deafening roar coincided with the sound of beating drums and warhorns from atop the Nanjin city walls. The South County Army began its charge. Having lost the burly man, the Nanman army was completely unable to repel the great momentum of the South County Army. The rain seemed to be stained red with blood. This was a terrible defeat that would shock the heavens. The Nanman army left behind a dense field of corpses, as they scrambled to retreat into the Nanman regions. The Nanman had gathered many of their tribes for this battle, but it ended so tragically for them. They had taken a huge blow to their strength and would probably not be able to bother the South County for some time. Xie Yunling and the many disciples of the Taoist pavilion stopped their Taoist techniques. Walking through the rain, they made their way to where Tang Yimo and the others were. Sima Qingshan also descended from the city walls. The sword Saint Hua Dongliu found Jing Yu, and patting Jing Yu on the shoulder, the pair made their way over together. The rain poured heavily on Tang Yimo, drenching him completely. However, Tang Yimo maintained a solemn demeanor, taking a step back, cupping his hands, and bowing down respectfully toward the others. On behalf of South County, I, Tang Yimo, would like to thank everyone for your assistance. With a laugh, Xie Yunling exchanged glances with the sword Saint Hua Dongliu. General Tang, you don't need to be so courteous. The Taoist Pavilion and Sword Pavilion are situated in South County. When South County is in trouble, how can we hide away and refuse to help? Xie Yunling laughed. Looking toward Jing Yu, Tang Yimo cupped his hands and said, Thank you very much, for the assistance of White Jade City. Jing Yu only smiled. He was a disciple of White Jade City, but he was also a citizen of the Great Zhou Dynasty. If the five barbarians were attacking Zhou, that was a national crisis. How could he, Jing Yu, run away from this fight? Sima Qingshan carried the picture scroll on his back and a brush in his hand. Looking at Tang Yimo, he frowned and said, General Tang, the Nanman army has retreated, but, I have a feeling that the burly man is not yet dead. The danger has not yet been neutralized, Sima Qingshan said. As he practiced the Tao of painting, Sima Qingshan had a very powerful soul strength. 
The Tao of painting had some similarities with Lu Fan's Go strategy. Tang Yimo nodded with a serious look in his eyes, but he was not too worried. Scanning the dense field of barbarian corpses littering the battlefield, he took a deep breath and replied, It doesn't matter. The Nanman army has suffered a complete defeat. Even if that person were to make a comeback, it would not be something we need to fear. If possible, I would have liked to enter the Nanman hinterlands and kill this person to prevent any future problems. However, being wary of some kind of deception, I decided not to pursue him. At the very least, the Nanman of the Five Barbarians will not pose a threat in the future. Still, what was that change that just occurred? Tang Yimo thought back to the instant the world transformed, as he grew serious and filled with doubts. Xie Yunling only put his hands behind his back, the rainwater dripping off his hair onto his hands. Turning his head, he looked in the direction of Bila City and took a deep breath. The young master stopped the fighting for three months, and now, this transformation of the world in Storm of Spirit Qi, could it be the work of the young master? Xie Yunling's words left everyone who heard it speechless. The only sound they made was of their heavy breathing. Tang Yimo looked toward Bila City. He recalled how he had once stood on the shore of Bila Lake and the terrifying aura he had sensed. The skin on his face twitched involuntarily. Maybe, what Xie Yunling said was true. That man in White Jade City, he might have really stopped the fighting for three months for this moment when the world would transform. Asterisk 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 the chili tribe village, on top of an altar. A burly figure wrapped in a black robe slowly pulled back his hood, revealing a face bearing a slightly pained expression. The destruction of his duplicate was a huge blow to him. The lord of the plane of this low-level martial world is way too mysterious. What kind of powers does he have to actually induce condensation of the earth's origin? The burly man stood upon the altar, wiping the rain off his face. Below the altar, sacrificial barbarians with blank looks in their eyes stood around like slaves, standing up straight while holding bamboo staves. The burly man was now hesitating. It was because at the moment, he was faced with two choices. The first would be to hide and live a disgraceful life in this world while he waited for another opportunity from the shadows. The other option would be to take the initiative and attack. However, he did not know the limits of this world's lord of the plain, so he was not feeling too confident. No, I need to spy on the strength of this lord of the plain. I need to enter the great Zhou dynasty. The burly man's eyes shone as he then turned his head to look to the east. If they could not invade from the south, then, he would have to create an opening from the east. He just happened to have a Dong Yi tribe serving him that he could make use of. Asterisk 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 west county, outside Harao gate. The killing intent was pervasive. The snow that continuously fell from the sky covered the corpses on the battleground with a dazzling white blanket. Coated in an armor of spirit chi, Ni Chongqing's white shirt flapped in the wind. The snowflakes that fell in front of him were ripped into pieces by the invisible airflow around him. Gripping the handle of the butcher knife in his hand, he walked toward the blonde man. Alien evil spirits will be put to death, Ni Chongqing said calmly. He did not partake in any communication with the blonde man and there was nothing that needed to be said between the two of them. In a life and death battle, they just needed to fight. Surprisingly, the blonde man felt some kind of fear from Ni Chongqing. After all, Ni Chongqing's strength was close to that of a cultivator at the peak of the foundation building realm. Ni Chongqing's strength was close to his own, aside from the fact that Ni Chongqing had yet to derive elemental energy. The blonde man started to let out some kind of light from his entire body, transforming into a man of light. In his hands, he wielded a sword of light that overflowed with a brilliant radiance. His eyes darted around as he scanned his surroundings. He was looking for the Lord of the Plain. He was terrified that the Lord of the Plain, hiding in the shadows, might suddenly attack without warning. Ni Chongqing made his first move. The butcher knife soared through the air the blade's shadows blending, and the knife chi sweeping outward. The razor-sharp knife chi sliced the rocks on the ground into tiny pieces. The blonde man drew his sword of light, as it collided with Ni Chongqing's knife. The area in front of the two of them seemed to become a special zone. It was filled with the endless collisions of fearsome cutting power. The butcher knife and the sword of light seemed to be crashing explosively into each other. The snow falling from the sky had no way of entering this zone. The dirt and rocks on the ground were chopped into tiny pieces. 
Ni Changqing's butcher knife did not stop ringing, as he launched a long series of attacks, countless slash marks scarring the ground. The blonde man was extremely irritated. He and the Buddhist monk could tell that this lord of the plain was using the two of them as stepping stones for Ni Changqing and the others. This fight was a training ground for Ni Changqing to hone his skills and new powers. How could they bear such an insult? They were already shamed when they became wanderers, and now after invading this world, they were being humiliated and oppressed again. As an invader, had they lost all of their dignity? Ni Changqing's white shirt flapped loudly. He continued to wield his butcher knife, as several cuts appeared on the spirit qi armor that covered his body. It was caused by the sword qi emitted by the sword of light, which had hit him but was stopped by the spirit qi armor formed when he tempered his five organs. The butcher knife and the sword of light continued to clash with each other. It was a collision of flashing cold steel. Around them, the soldiers' cries on the battlefield grew increasingly intense. The Zilang armored horsemen charged in fearlessly, and even the heavens seemed to be on the side of Shang family's army, as they completely pushed back the armies of the Gafong and Moria Empire. On the other side, the overlord moved, and a mass of demonic chi was called forth from his body. The black axe in his hands seemed to carry overwhelming force, as he swung it viciously toward the bald Buddhist monk. Clang! The bald Buddhist monk put his palms together, and the golden Buddha statue that cried tears of blood blocked the attack. A crisp sound rang out, and the bald Buddhist monk rubbed his palms together. In the next moment, the golden Buddha statue turned a blood-red color as though it had been stained with fresh blood after being drenched in it. Actually using me as a stepping stone, you're courting death. The bald Buddhist monk had a brutal and ruthless look in his eyes. He wrapped his palms around the string of prayer beads hanging on his neck and pulled it fiercely. With a snap, the prayer bead necklace was pulled apart. However, the prayer beads that were sent flying did not scatter across the ground. Instead, the bald Buddhist monk swung his sleeves to hit them, sending each prayer bead shooting toward the overlord at extreme speeds. The overlord raised his bloody shield. Boom, boom, boom. Each prayer bead smashed into the bloody shield with massive amounts of force, as the color of blood exploded out from the surface of the bloody shield. The overlord was brought to the ground, falling back two steps. The bald Buddhist monk also made his move, closing in on the overlord in an instant. This humble monk is at the peak foundation building level, while you, demon, have just entered the foundation building level. Why are you so full of yourself? The Buddhist monk yelled. This shout was like a deafening roar, and the sound alone made the overlord dizzy. Still, the Buddhist monk continued to throw punches, each blow landing squarely on the bloody shield. Each punch seemed to have the force of a gale. The overlord was being continuously pushed back, as troughs were beginning to form where his feet dug into the ground. You're an evil demon, and I'm a Buddha. It's only natural for a Buddha to triumph over a demon. The Buddhist monk continued to shout, chants coming out from his mouth like blood-red lotus flowers. Even so, the Buddhist monk was fierce, but the overlord was fiercer. The spirit chi swirl that had been spinning clockwise on the overlord body suddenly came to a stop. Then, it slowly started to spin in the opposite direction. He tossed aside his bloody shield. The Buddhist monk's fist smashed into the overlord's stout chest, causing a slight indentation to appear on the front, while shockwaves flew out through the air behind the overlord. However, the overlord did not seem affected and even flashed a cold smile. The Buddhist monk's eyes grew serious. The overlord let out a roar. An eye for an eye. His elbow crashed into the Buddhist monk's head, sending him hurtling back dozens of meters. The fighting had triggered the overlord bloodlust, and his demonic chi had grown thick and viscous. Encased in mighty power, as wisps of demonic chi encircled his body, he charged straight at the Buddhist monk. The Buddhist monk bounced up off the ground, and the bloody Buddha behind him struck out with its palm. The overlord did not attempt to avoid it, he took the full brunt of the palm strike. Fresh blood spurted out from his mouth, but at the same time, he swept the black axe in his hand toward the Buddhist monk, slashing a huge gash in the Buddhist monk's chest. The Buddhist monk was stupefied. This man, really defied all logic. How could anyone fight in such a barbaric and unreasonable way? The overlord did not bother dodging the Buddhist monk's attacks at all, and the moment the Buddhist monk attacked, the overlord would withstand the hit while striking back at the Buddhist monk. 
This gave the Buddhist monk an inexplicable bad feeling in the pits of his stomach. The overlord mouth was stained red with blood, yet he still howled with laughter. A Buddha triumphs over demons? Triumph over me then, come on. The overlord was completely fearless, willing to trade hits blow for blow. The Buddhist monk was reeling from the damage he took. Although he was a cultivator at the peak of foundation building realm, he was actually completely helpless against the overlord. The fierce would lose to the barbaric, the barbaric would lose to the ruthless, and the ruthless would lose to the reckless. The overlord was one such reckless individual. The Buddhist monk did not have the muscular physique of the overlord, and his physical state began to deteriorate rapidly after taking a few hits from the axe. After all, he was not heavily armored, unlike the overlord. With every palm strike the Buddhist monk landed on the overlord, the latter would counter with a heavy punch. The Buddhist monk was beaten up badly, his mouth was swollen, and his face was bruised black and blue, blood flowing freely from his wounds. He could not even continue his chants of Amitabha. The palms he had put together in prayer were trembling. The Buddhist monk felt forlorn. Was a wanderer like him, without even meeting the Lord of the Plain, going to meet his end here? Oh, Buddha, what should I do? The Buddhist monk turned his beaten and bruised face up toward the snowy sky, feeling hopeless. Poof! The overlord blasted forward, sweeping out with the long axe in his hands. In that instant, the Buddhist monk's blood stained the white snow. A disembodied head soared into the sky. The overlord eyes blazed like torches. In order to prevent the Buddhist monk from reviving himself from his head, the overlord leapt off from the ground, his burly body flying up into the sky full of snow. With a single punch, he burst the head apart. The white snow was stained with crimson. It drifted down slowly from the heavens onto the earth. The headless body of the Buddhist monk stood where it was, as the cold blood red snow covered his body. The Buddhist monk's corpse stood stock still, hands still put together in prayer. The overlord landed on the ground, panting heavily. Suddenly, the overlord pupils shrank, he saw. A hideous and restless spirit floating out from the corpse. The twisted soul of the Buddhist monk stared at the overlord with resentment. Demon who had slighted a Buddha, a day will come, today, a Buddha. On another day, a demon. One day, you, too, will become a headless corpse like this humble monk. You will wander the earth aimlessly. The Buddhist monk's spirit laid a resentful curse on the overlord, and unconsciously, his eyes grew serious. Asterisk 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 on Bilaw Lake. Resting his chin on his hand, with the other hand tapping lightly on his wheelchair, Lu Fan raised his eyebrow slightly. He raised up a hand in the shape of a claw and grasped at the empty space in front of him. This grasp, it seemed to cross an incredible distance. In front of Harau Gate, the twisted spirit of the Buddhist monk's resentful curses came to an abrupt end. The reason for this was that above his head, a hand, made up of condensed spirit chi, was descending from the sky. Chapter 179. Chi Refiner Realm Boss. The violent gale suddenly hit. At this moment, the spirit chi diffused in the world condensed into a palm, which was vividly reproduced and seemed extremely real. Even the lines were visible. A fearsome feeling of power spread throughout the battlefield, making even the overlord catch his breath. This kind of pressure left the overlord sweating and made his hair stand on end. Even though he had currently entered the internal organs realm, before the appearance of the spirit chi palm, he could not muster up even a shred of fighting spirit. This is, the overlord immediately forgot all about the curses the twisted spirit of the Buddhist monk was spouting. Moreover, he was not concerned about the curses at all. Young Master Lu. The overlord murmured. Only that young man in White Jade City could perform this kind of thurgy, to condense a palm from thousands of miles away. Then, the palm crashed down, as the twisted spirit of the Buddhist monk let out a miserable wail. He wanted to escape and spread out into the world, but he was unable to avoid this palm, as it enveloped him straight away and fiercely smashed him into the ground. The overlord could suddenly feel the earth shake from the impact. Then, he heard the Buddhist monk's spirit wailing again from within the earth. But the palm formed of spirit chi was merciless. It smacked the monk a few more times, as though it was swatting a fly. The Buddhist monk's spirit stopped its wailing, as it even entered a kind of stupor. To the overlord, it was an extremely familiar incident, it reminded him of himself back then, after he had received a savage beating from society. 
Finally, as though it was picking up a small chick, the spirit Shi Palm pinched up the Buddhist monk's spirit and vanished into thin air. The Buddhist monk's headless corpse fell backward like a log in the falling snow. Buzz. A gust of spirit she blew by. The corpse disintegrated into ashes right away, scattering into the wind. In the distance, the blonde man who was locked in combat with Ni Chongqing sensed the Buddhist monk's aura disappearing, and he stopped in his tracks. Blocking the butcher knife in Ni Chongqing's hand with his own sword, he looked in the Buddhist monk's direction in disbelief. There, he saw the Buddhist monk's corporeal body scattering into ashes. It was going to disappear into the air completely. This scene brought a horrific thought to the blonde man's mind. The body would be destroyed without a trace. Who did this? There was a cold feeling in the pit of the blonde man's stomach as he thought of this world's strange lord of the plain, who had yet to make his appearance or join a fight. Was the Buddhist monk's disappearance this lord of the plain's doing? Although your strength is slightly above mine, Still, how dare you get distracted in the midst of our battle? All of a sudden, Ni Chongqing's voice resounded in the blonde man's mind. Oh no! The blonde man was shaken as he looked toward Ni Chongqing's position in the next moment. There, he saw, the man dressed in white slowly spreading apart his arms, stretching them out in front of him, like a legendary giant bird spreading its wings. The butcher knife was rotating at high speed in front of him, and as it spun, it let out a sharp sound as it cut through the air. Wisps of spirit qi were gushing forth from Ni Chongqing's qi core. The spirit qi was converging around the butcher knife. It transformed into a phantom blade that was gradually becoming solid. Knife control technique, Ni Chongqing said impassively. Following this, he raised his hand and brought it down fiercely toward the blonde man as though he was holding a huge phantom blade. The illusory blade that was over 10 meters long came slashing downward suddenly. The blonde man wanted to evade this attack, but he found himself unable to move away from under Ni Chongqing's phantom blade. Somehow a force made him unable to dodge. This is, knife spirit. The blonde man was taken aback. Even though it was only an indistinct knife spirit, but, the bonus it added to his combat power was extremely significant. Things like knife spirits and sword spirits were difficult to comprehend. He did not expect anyone to actually realize the existence of knife spirits in a low-level martial world like this one. He was unable to escape. The blonde man hurriedly raised the sword of light in his hands to block the attack. Boom! The fearsome waves of knife chi seemed to slice apart the air itself. An empty space was cut out through the sky filled with falling snow. As the snow drifted down from the sky, it bypassed the areas enveloped by the knife spirit. The dust and gravel on the ground were pushed apart. The sword of light in the blonde man's hand was broken in two. His golden locks of hair were cut, slowly falling on the ground. Following this, blood dripped down onto the falling golden hair. A hideous gash stretched out from his waist as though he was almost split in half. The dark red blood flowed out unceasingly. Inside his body, the knife spirit was creating chaos and disrupting his life force. The blonde man let out a cry of agony, staggering two steps before collapsing backward onto the ground. He gasped for air hungrily. Tiny beads of sweat were densely packed on his forehead. The blonde man watched as Ni Chongqing walked toward him, his eyes fixed on the man's floating butcher knife. A smile surfaced on his deathly pale face. In this smile, there was a sense of helplessness and of release. He raised a trembling bloodied hand, stroking his blonde hair. Raising his head, he saw that Ni Chongqing was already standing before him, blocking his view of the snow that covered the sky. Will you do me a favor and give me a merciful and beautiful death? The blonde man asked. He did not want to meet an ugly end like that of the Buddhist monk. Looking down on him from above, Ni Chongqing's face was stony and expressionless. In his eyes, he saw what had happened in the long corridor of the central palace. In that scene, he saw how the ancient cultivators had met a tragic end while facing the alien evil spirits in battle. He saw images of the ancient sovereign surrounded by many powerful enemies, refusing to hand over the mountain river behind him at the cost of his life. Slowly, he let out a long breath. I will not, Ni Chongqing replied. As the words left his mouth, the blonde man's expression immediately froze. Splurt. The butcher knife turned into a black blur, as it swept across him. The blonde man's head was thrown up high into the sky before it crashed into the ground. 
In front of Ni Chongqing, the butcher knife floated in the air. Ni Chongqing retrieved a white cloth handkerchief from his sleeve and gently wiped the dark red blood off the butcher knife. White snow blew past him as he did so, adding a touch of grace to this elegant scene. From the blonde man's headless corpse, a twisted spirit emerged. It was comparable in its hideousness and madness to that of the Buddhist monks. However, the blonde man's spirit had an evil laugh. He twisted around to stare at Ni Chongqing who was wiping the butcher knife with the cloth and let out a weird and creepy laugh. A day will come when you all will meet invaders even stronger than us. You will feel how powerless you are, and you will also end up like me, having your heads chopped off as you suffer in despair. The blonde man was incomparably hideous. Even so, Ni Chongqing finished wiping the butcher knife, taking in the blonde man's words very calmly. He put away the cleaned butcher knife at his waist. I know. Ni Chongqing was completely composed. He glanced up at the sky full of falling snow. This land has been invaded by alien evil spirits like yourself a long time ago. Elegies flow out from the ground here, the sovereign has wept tears of blood, and the sky has wailed in mourning. Even so, we will grow stronger. We will not allow the regrets of the ancients to be repeated in this land, Ni Chongqing answered slowly. The blonde man's spirit was stunned. This guy, what was he saying? Were they not the first batch of invaders? This inhabitant of a low-level martial world was so strange. Boom. Up in the sky, Spirit Qi gathered and transformed once again into a phantom palm. Ni Chongqing looked up at the palm, sensing a familiar aura, and a look of respect finally surfaced on his calm face. Moreover, this world, has the young master. Ni Chongqing's unshaven lips curled up in a smile. The spirit Qi palm suddenly crashed down. Trying to resist it, the blonde man's spirit let out a miserable shriek. Then, he met the same tragic fate as the Buddhist monk's spirit, as the spirit Qi palm gave him a vicious beating before he quieted down and stopped his howling. Again, picking him up like one would pick up a small chick, the spirit Qi palm vanished into thin air. Ni Chongqing watched the blonde man's corpse disintegrate into ashes, scattering into the sky alongside the snow. He let out a breath of warm air. Shaking his head, he looked up at the gloomy skies. The falling white snow had an icy coldness as it fell on his face and soaked into his skin. Our world, is protected by our white jade city. Asterisk 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 Bila Lake Island. Lu Fan grasped out in the air once again. They were really keeping him busy. These wanderers are somewhat quite weak. Lu Fan was a little speechless. When the quest completion objective the system gave him was to prevent the destruction of the White Jade City, Lu Fan had thought these wanderers would be very powerful. However, these wanderers were so weak that they left Lu Fan feeling kind of disappointed. He had wanted these wanderers to be stepping stones for Ni Chongqing and the Overlord, but it was a pity. They died very peacefully. Kaboom! The formless spirit Qi transformed into a storm. The surface of Bila Lake suddenly sunk inward as though an invisible boat was pushing down the water as it moved at high speed. A loud roaring noise accompanied this event. It alarmed the fishes and birds around the island. Finally, the roaring noise subsided. On the lake surface, the figures of two translucent spirits had appeared all of a sudden. They were still in a state of disarray and had not yet recovered from the vicious beating they had endured. Dense spirit Qi floated around Lufan, as he sat in the Thousand Blades chair, observing the two figures impassively. The internal organs realm was comparable to the foundation building realm. Even though they were two different cultivation methods, they were equal in terms of combat ability. When one reached the internal organs realm, one was able to see the inner workings of the body and control how spirit chi circulated within the body and temper the internal organs. This was because the soul had become stronger. For this reason, when a powerful master of the internal organs realm died, their soul would not be destroyed immediately and could temporarily appear in a solid state. Under Lu Fan's control, the dense spirit Qi cut them off from the outside world. The spirits of the blonde man and the Buddhist monk regained consciousness. After that, they saw Lu Fan. The Buddhist monk and the blonde man were both stunned. He was a very good-looking young man, dressed in clothes whiter than snow and seated in a wheelchair. However, the fact that the wheelchair was floating above the lake surface highlighted to them that he was no ordinary young man. The Lord of the Plain. The spirits of the Buddhist monk and the blonde man let out cries of surprise. 
Lu Fan shot both of them a sidelong glance and gave a slight nod. He was not paying them much attention at this moment because something had happened when he brought the Buddhist monk and the blonde man into his custody. Before his eyes, a system prompt had popped out. Appraisal quest. Resist the invasion of the four wanderers from the alien world in the spiritual sense duplicate of a mid-level martial world's Lord of the Plain. Current rate of progress. Three-fifths. Lu Fan rested his chin on one hand while tapping lightly on his wheelchair with the other. Rate of progress. Does this mean there are still two wanderers that haven't been dealt with? Lu Fan gave it some thought. While Lu Fan was thinking, the Buddhist monk and the blonde man had already recovered from their initial shock. Looking straight at each other, they recognized the stunned look in each other's eyes. Very quickly, this stunned look transformed into a look of shock and rage. They had been deceived. They were the victims of a huge scam. The young man in a wheelchair before them was no old golden elixir realm monster. They knew this because he did not emit the oppressive aura of one who had condensed a golden elixir. He was not even at the foundation building realm. From what the spirits of the Buddhist monk and blonde man could sense, this young man in front of them was only at the Qi condensation realm. Just the Qi condensation realm. How could the Buddhist monk and blonde man not be angered? They had made the right bets, but they were slain by the native inhabitants of this world. This left them feeling awful. They were vexed and suffering greatly. If Lu Fan were to try and describe their current emotional state, it would be a kind of despair equivalent to winning the top prize of a lottery and then discovering that the winning lottery ticket had been torn to shreds. Qi condensation realm, haha, actually just a Qi condensation realm. The blonde man did not know whether to cry or to laugh. The Buddhist monk placed his palms together in prayer, his emotions in turmoil. Uh, are you done lamenting? Lu Fan asked lightly, looking at the Buddhist monk and the blonde man. I never expected the Lord of the Plain actually to be this weak. No wonder you never made a move. It turns out, it wasn't that you didn't want to, but that you couldn't, the blonde man remarked. If I knew you were this weak, we could have simply invaded the great Zhou dynasty and come straight to White Jade City to eliminate you. Why did we bother stirring up the five barbarians to attack the great Zhou? The blonde man was filled with regret. Lu Fan rested his chin on one hand while the other hand stroking the Phoenix Feather Sword's handguard, as he silently watched the blonde man muttering to himself. The Buddhist monk's spirit suddenly raised up his head. Now that we know, it's still not too late. If we overcome this Lord of the Plains soul, we can take his place. A savage expression suddenly surfaced on the Buddhist monk's peaceable face. He suddenly transformed into the evil Buddha. He pounced savagely toward Lu Fan, who was seated in his wheelchair. Lu Fan's lips curled up in a sneer. He had detained the souls of the blonde man and the Buddhist monk and brought them here because he wanted to research their cultivation methods. He did not expect the two of them to develop, a convenient misconception. Was the vicious beating he had just given them, a false impression? Did they conveniently forget how they had just been given a thrashing? So what if he was at a Qi refining level? Was someone at a Qi refining level not qualified to be a boss? When he had refined a hundred levels of Qi, he would be able to eliminate all gods and demons under the heavens. Lu Fan plucked at the wheelchair's armrest lightly with his finger. Are you, out of your mind? A ray of silver light gathered and shot out. With a poof, it penetrated the space between the evil Buddha spirit's eyebrows, nailing him in midair. The aura emitted from the silver blade was almost enough to disperse the evil Buddha's frail spirit. From Lu Fan's body, wisps of spirit chi had started to gush out. There was a terrifying pressure, as though a fearsome power had broken the peace. It was a dreadful oppressive feeling, as though a sleeping lion had just opened its eyes. It was like the rising sun had come out over the horizon to shine its light over the earth. The blonde man's spirit went limp, dropping to his knees on the lake surface. The howls of pain from the pinned Buddhist monk's spirit came to an abrupt stop. The fearsome aura spreading out through the world gave them the feeling that he could blow them to smithereens with just a little push. This aura, a gold, golden elixir realm, monster. The blonde man was so scared that he could not speak properly. The aura coming from Lu Fan at this moment was like a blazing sun. If they were regular ghostly spirits, Lu Fan was like a blazing sun god. A golden elixir realm. He was a damn golden elixir realm cultivator. 
They found that their bets had been wrong from the very beginning. It was not that Lu Fan could not kill them, but he just could not be bothered to. The current reality had shown them the truth, and all their assumptions had been misconceptions. It turns out, Lu Fan was really using them to sharpen the skills of Ni Chongqing and the others. Lu Fan paid no heed to the spirits of the blonde man and the Buddhist monk. He simply raised his hand, and lightly motioned toward the lake surface in front of him. Instantly, the waters of the lake split apart, from within the lake. A ray of golden light soared upward. Bathed in golden light, there was a twisted face numbed with desperation. Ah, uh, there's still two more to go, Lu Fan said tapping lightly on the armrest with his fingers. In the distance, when the blonde man and the evil Buddha saw the golden light, they sensed the strong aura of spiritual sense coming from the golden light that threatened to blow their spirits apart. It was a scene that threw them deeper into the pits of despair. There was another golden elixir realm monster. Inside the lake, there was actually another hidden golden elixir realm monster. Chapter 180. Trying to escape after bullying a child of my white jade city. North County. Outside Tianhen Gate. The snow had stopped, and the sky had brightened up. The Lord of Zerong ripped off the face of human skin he was wearing, revealing a face like burned coal underneath. He stared into the distance, where three fire phoenixes looked like balls of flame, and a serious expression appeared on his face. The world was transforming, and, these three chickens were also transforming. Sparks shot out from the charcoal-like face of the Lord of Zerong. However, his sparks were not like a fiery blaze but were an icy white flame that was permeated with a slight feeling of death. If the flames of Lil Phoenix 1, 2, and 3 were described as red hot, then the Lord of Zerong's flames were icy cold. Although they both were fires, they were at the opposite ends of the spectrum, one hot and the other cold. The former was like the blazing sun in the sky, while the latter was like a cold fire from the netherworld. The three fire phoenixes versus the Lord of Zerong. Ever since the Lord of Zerong had experienced the warning from that mysterious gaze once again, he had started to become more vigilant. With these three fire phoenixes around, it would be difficult for him to break through the North County's defense line and invade the Great Zhou Dynasty in a short span of time. Furthermore, the transformation that occurred moments ago had increased the concentration of spirit Qi in this world. The young girl who controlled the three fire phoenixes seemed to have gained some kind of insight during this transformative period. The three fire phoenixes seemed to grow fiercer by the moment and seemed to be slowly but steadily growing strong enough to overpower his dead spirit fire. Boom. The Lord of Zerong's eyes narrowed into a squint. In the next moment, his body moved back, as white flames leapt out from his head. Then, an invisible wave was released from his body. The white flames flared up and leapt out, landing on the ground surrounding him. Very soon, a chilling scene unfolded. On North County's battlefield, with the Lord of Zerong at the center, the corpses of the soldiers on the ground that were touched by the white flames crawled to life off the ground, regardless of whether they were Zerong soldiers or North County soldiers. Dozens of corpses rose and came to life, like walking zombies, their eyes burning with a white-hot flame. Their bodies swayed from side to side as they shuffled through, icy cold blood spilling from the corpses and snow being shaken off their dead bodies. The Lord of Zerong's head spouted white flame, as he stared into the distance at Bai Qingyao, who was controlling the three fire phoenixes. He raised a hand, and a white flame danced on his fingertips. It was as though the corpses were tethered to him by invisible strands. He motioned with his hand ferociously. The corpses lurched into a mad sprint toward Bai Qingyao, scattering the snow on the ground in front of them as they charged like crazed wild beasts. The three fire phoenixes wanted to block them but the Lord of Zerong stopped them before they could do so. Dozens of corpses from both sides rushed headlong toward Bai Qingyao. Bai Qingyao had never seen a battle like this before and was momentarily flustered. Next to her, Ni Shuang burst out in a roar, stepping forward in front of Bai Qingyao to protect her, as he assumed a steady half-squat position. His fists were held at the ready at his waist. He faced the bunch of crazed soldiers that rushed toward him. With an explosive shout, he suddenly punched out. Although with the basic punching posture, Ni Shuang had practiced it day and night until it was practically a conditioned reflex. From the moment he entered Lake Island, he practiced his punches and posture every single day. And this was like the moment of truth, where he would see the fruits of his efforts. Boom. 
A fist shot forward, and almost imperceptibly, an illusory fist seemed to appear. It was a simple punch, but the power and force behind it were incomparable. He threw punch after punch. The corpses that were charging toward them were blown away one after the other by the force of the punches. Big head. Nicely done. Bai Qingyao had originally been slightly flustered, but when she saw the display of might from Ni Shuang, she could not help but raise her fists and cheer jubilantly. The other people on the battlefield felt frightened at first. This was because they had just seen the corpses of their dead comrades rise up from the ground with their own eyes. The shock from such a sight was too intense to bear. Even Tan Tai Zan, who was being held back by the others, opened his bloodshot eyes wide at the sight of corpses coming to life. However, when Ni Shuang stood before Bai Qingniao, firm, tenacious, and unyielding, simply punching at the enemies, it shattered the effect the scene had on them. Even Tan Tai Zan could not resist cheering for him, as expected from a kid who came out from White Jade City. There was something special about him after all. Boom. The Lord of Zerong was slightly surprised by this outcome. Still, he seized this opportunity while Bai Qingyao had lost control of the three fire phoenixes in her panic. At great speed, he rushed toward Bai Qingyao, intending to bring a quick end to this battle. Be careful. Ni Shuang's youthful yet determined face did not show a trace of complacency. It was because he saw the Lord of Zerong charging toward them. An immense pressure was bursting out from the Lord of Zerong's body. The pressure caused the hair on Ni Shuang's big head to rustle in the breeze, and he felt like each of his pores was closing up tightly. So powerful, it's even stronger than the pressure that father brings. Ni Shuang grit his teeth. Still, his legs were anchored to the ground, like two sturdy pine trees rooted in bluestone. He did not relax in the slightest, which made his body rock steady, without wavering at all. He did not retreat. He also showed no fear. He recalled Ni Chongqing's teachings and cultivation guidance he had received under the setting sun on shores of Bila Lake. Ni Shuang had a heart that had grown strong, so he distinctly remembered the words Ni Chongqing spoke to him. Shuanger, one day, you will finally grow from a boy to a man. Only by growing strong can you use your own fists to protect yourself and protect the people behind you. Boom. There was an explosion of white snow. Bai Qingyao's face went pale. Big head. Run away, quickly. The Lord of Zerong was aggressively approaching them, after breaking away from Lil Phoenix One and the others. This was outside of Bai Qingyao's predictions, and she felt annoyed at herself for her lack of real combat experience. Luo Cheng rushed over, slinging a blade. Having consumed the dragon's blood elixir, the power of the dragon's blood flowed through his body. However, the pressure coming from the Lord of Zerong was too oppressive, causing blood to rush to his head. The Lord of Zerong's head was ablaze with white flames, as he dove toward them. Even so, Ni Shuang continued to stare down the Lord of Zerong with determination. He could not retreat. If he fell back, Bai Qingyao, who was behind him, would be left open to attack. Ni Shuang let out a low roar. In his steady half-squat position, he retracted his fists back to his waist level. In his eyes, he saw a scene he would never forget. It was a scene that had been deeply engraved into his young mind. It was a stormy night. In a small alleyway, the scene was of Ni Chongqing turning to yell at him, telling him to run as fast as he could without looking back. In that moment, he thought he was about to lose his father. The Lord of Zerong looked at Ni Shuang in surprise. This young child seemed to be showing a resolve that far exceeded that of a regular person. He could see Ni Shuang's fear, as his slightly quivering lips betrayed the terror in Ni Shuang's heart. Yet he did not know what else he had inside of him that allowed Ni Shuang to conquer his fear. Ha! Ni Shuang shouted out explosively as he threw a punch. He envisioned the Lord of Zerong as Bila Lake and imagined he was throwing punches at Bila Lake under the evening sun. He pushed out his fist with much difficulty, as though Ni Chongqing was standing opposite him, using his butcher knife to send turbulent waves from the lake crashing into him continuously. The Lord of Zerong did not hold back because Ni Shuang was a child. He also struck out with a fist. Dong! Ni Shuang's fist collided with the Lord of Zerong's fist. A large fist collided with a small fist. A peak foundation building level and a qi core realm. The snow under the two fighters' feet was instantly blown away in all directions by the surging force of the punches. Some of the corpses strewn about were also sent flying. 
The Lord of Zerong was shaken to his core, because this punch from Ni Shuang was so solid that it left him shocked. Landing on the ground, the Lord of Zerong took a small step backward. Meanwhile, Ni Shuang was pushed back several steps, and each heavy step backward left an indentation on the ground. Blood poured out from Ni Shuang's mouth and nose, but his eyes gleamed with excitement. He had stopped it, he had successfully stopped it. Ni Shuang vaguely remembered how he had thrown punches at the enormous waves Ni Chongqing sent toward him and how he had been sent flying each and every time. In the very beginning, the pain was so bad he bawled his eyes out. However, after crying for a long time, Ni Shuang did not cry anymore. He only gritted his teeth, getting back up again to strike out with his fists. Despite all this, he had never once succeeded, however, this time, he was successful. Zhang Li supported Ni Shuang from behind, and the residual force from the impact tore the webbing of Zhang Li's hands. Bai Qingyao's eyes had long turned red with fury, as the Nine Phoenix's transformation grew clearer and clearer in her mind. Lil Phoenix 1, 2, and 3. Get him. The three fire phoenixes spread their wings and advanced, and then they collided into the Lord of Zerong, and he felt a jolt of shock. Bai Qingyao's rage seemed to have been transmitted to the three fire phoenixes, and there seemed to be barely noticeable signs that they were transforming. The Lord of Zerong felt the pressure mounting against him, knowing that he had lost any chance of killing Bai Qingyao. As such, he beat a hasty retreat. The Lord of Zerong took a long look at Ni Shuang and then at Bai Qingyao. He also glanced toward Zhang Li and the foul-mouthed Tantai Zan in the distance. The white flames on his head were extinguished. He raised his head to look up in the sky, thinking to himself that this was truly a beautiful world. He covered his face once again with the skin of the Lord of Zerong that he had torn off. Following this, his toes broke apart the snow on the ground. He began to retreat rapidly and had disappeared in the blink of an eye. The great Zerong army also began to fall back. Since the Lord of Zerong was retreating, they would also retreat. Bai Qingyao stopped her cultivation technique. The three fire phoenixes then turned back into small chicks. Lil Phoenix 2 and Lil Phoenix 3's wings drooped weakly, as they lay motionless in the snow like little balls of fluff. On the other hand, Lil Phoenix 1 was very excited. Grabbing Lil Phoenix 2 and 3 in its talons, it beat its small wings, flying toward Bai Qingyao like a hard-working little honeybee. Bai Qingyao caught the three small chicks, she then used the Nine Phoenixes' transformation to replenish their strength and placed them inside her backpack. Following this, she hurried and ran toward Zhang Li and Ni Shuang. Zhang Li was doing fairly all right. Although he had vomited blood after being struck by the Lord of Zerong's finger, his injuries were nothing serious. As for Ni Shuang, he was staring blankly at his hands. Blood was pouring from his mouth and nose, but he had an exuberant look of excitement in his eyes. He saw Bai Qingyao sprinting over toward him. His lips parted haltingly, blood leaking from the corner of his mouth, as he mumbled, I, I did it. Then, Ni Shuang's vision went black, and he fainted in Zhang Li's embrace. On the battlefield, people were crying out in surprise. Up in the sky, thick snow started to fall once again, drifting down lightly like goose feathers. Asterisk 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 Li Sansi came out from the Wenshan Peak secret realm in the Tai Mountains. Wielding a wooden sword and dressed in a drooping Taoist priest robe, he stood before the Dragon Gate. Thick feather-like snow drifted down from the sky. With an open palm, he stretched out his hand and caught a snowflake. He watched it as it melted into cold water in his hand. He had initially planned to come out from the Bujo Peak Dragon Gate where the Torch Dragon was and hurry over to the Tianhen Gate battlefield, at the same time, he would conveniently be able to see Zhu Long. But while Bai Qingyao, Ni Shuang, and the others could pass through the Bujo Peak Dragon Gate, only he, Li Sansi, was unable to pass through it. Even, when he walked out of the chains of the Central Palace and stepped onto the floating Sky Island. A terrifying aura burst out from within the Bujo Peak Dragon Gate. There was a vague feeling like black and white eyes were about to open, watching him. No matter what he said, the torch dragon would not give him a reply, and all he sensed was this set of eyes slowly opening. In the end, Lee Sansi had to leave, he felt both helpless and forlorn. As such, he had no choice but to emerge from the Wenshan Peak Dragon Gate. And when he had appeared at the Wenshan Peak Dragon Gate, the world's transformation had begun. 
majestic spirit Shi had burst forth from within the dragon gate, and fanning out, it spread into the four winds. Once again, he had been obstructed. Finally, when the anomaly of the world disappeared, he emerged from the dragon gate. Wen Shen Peak was very far away from Tianhan Gate. Li Sansi set aside his complicated feelings, bringing out the spirit Qi from his Qi core and striding out in a sprint. Since he was a cultivator in the internal organs realm, he didn't run out of breath when he sprinted toward Tianhan Gate. This gave him the opportunity to sprint at high speeds without stopping to rest, and his pace would not lose out to that of a galloping horse. However, looking at the long road ahead of him, Li Sansi could not help but feel sorrowful. Running alone under the heavily falling snow was the dismal state of his youth. Asterisk 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 the entire Bila Lake was engulfed in a thick fog. Through the misty spirit Qi, there was no way of getting a clear picture of what was happening. On the island, gorgeous chrysanthemum flowers and peach blossoms were in bloom. Ni Yu was still sitting cross-legged on the ground with the black pot on her head. The black pot was still continuously sucking in spirit Qi. She was starting to feel bored and pulled out a sugar-coated gathering chi elixir from her cloth pouch and stuffed it into her mouth. She chewed on it like one would chew on a piece of candy. Yi Yu had also finished her cultivation. With this explosion of spirit chi, Yi Yu's cultivation had significantly increased, and she had actually shot into the peak of the chi core realm at one go. Of course, stabilizing this power would still take a significant amount of time. Sister Yi Yu. Would you like to eat this? Ni Yu glanced at Yi Yu beside her, retrieving a sugar coated gathering chi elixir and passing it over. But Yi Yu waved her away. No, I'll pass. She had just reached the peak of the chi core realm, and if she ate a gathering chi elixir now, she was afraid that something might happen. Sister Ning's aura is growing stronger and stronger, she's probably going to finish tempering the fourth internal organ. Ni Yu chewed on the elixir with the black pot on her head. She looked remarkably like a gossipy village ant munching on melon seeds, and the only thing lacking was that she was not crossing her legs. With regard to Ni Yu's image, Yi Yu was speechless. What's the young master doing out over the lake? While Ni Yu chewed on the elixir, her nosy heart was aroused. Was the young master who had just come out from his seclusion isolating himself yet again in a different location? Don't keep chewing on those elixirs, Yi Yu warned. Don't worry. Sister Yi Yu. I've chewed on way too many gathering chi elixirs, and my cultivation has reached the peak chi core realm long ago. Now I just eat them like snacks, since they don't have any effect on me now anyway. Yi Yu was speechless. Seeing Ni Yu with a black pot on her head, Yi Yu suddenly had the urge to beat her up. Asterisk 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 within the dense spirit chi, the lake's surface was calm. Lu Fan sat in the Thousand Blades chair. The Buddhist monk's spirit had been pierced through by a silver blade, and even though he was in burning pain, he dared not move a single finger at this moment. It was because, Lu Fan's body was emitting a fearsome pressure while seated on the wheelchair. Even though they detected that Lu Fan was still only in the ballpark of the Qi condensation realm. The pressure he was applying on them was equivalent to that of a golden elixir realm monster. What was even more horrifying was, this delicate-looking golden elixir realm monster had sealed away another golden elixir realm monster. What kind of monstrous world was this? They had originally thought that they were fortunate to come into a low-level martial world. Yet in this current situation, they felt like they must have gathered eight lifetimes of bad luck to have been chosen to enter this world. Lu Fan looked impassively at the kneeling spirit of the blonde man and the spirit of the Buddhist monk that he had pinned in the air. These two were wanderers, and detaining their souls would certainly be very useful for Lu Fan. Just like with the spiritual sense duplicate of the mid-level martial world's Lord of the Plain, Lu Fan could borrow their power to absorb the Earth's origin. The souls of these wanderers were of a lower quality, but still. They were still not completely worthless. This was because behind every wanderer, there once existed a world in a culture. Hum? Suddenly. Lu Fan slightly frowned as he sat in the Thousand Blades chair. Along with this frown, the entire Bila Lake seemed to ripple slightly, as the pressure he emitted grew stronger and stronger. It was so strong that the spirit of the Buddhist monk pinned by the Silver Blade was at risk of being destroyed. The blonde man was even more afraid now, freezing in place. A golden elixir realm monster, having trained his spiritual sense, 
he could annihilate them with a single thought. Which one among them would dare to move? Lu Fan leaned on the Thousand Blades chair, resting his chin on his hand, as lines jumped in his pupils. Well, Lil Ni Shuang has done a pretty good job. Lu Fan gave a small nod. Just like what Ni Chongqing would say, bullying the girls of my White Jade City is inexcusable. And the children of my White Jade City are also not to be bullied. The spirit pressure chessboard instantly floated up in the air before Lu Fan. Trying to escape after bullying a child of my White Jade City. You might be a little too optimistic. He rolled up his sleeve and then picked up a chess piece. He held a black chess piece in his hand and placed it down on the chessboard. 